First time in a long time, but back like I never left. Taking these things as it comes, you know me, I don't read ahead. Watch me burn down everything, BBE on the TV set. When I'm in control on the road, you can never really know what's up next. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Braden Harrington here with Davey Portman for Up Next. You found us at postwrestling.com or whatever podcast app you are using. And we are live on youtube.com slash at, no, slash post wrestling. Yeah. It's been a long week already. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we are not alone. We have a special guest with us, not only visiting Toronto, Ontario, Canada, mm -hmm. but visiting the BDE. Here she is, Stephanie Hi, Chase. Hi, everyone. Hello. Um, I'm sorry if I'm not going to look at the camera the whole time. We don't <laughs> either. Yeah. We, we don't ever look at the camera. It. But hi, everyone. Yes, I'm in Toronto, and I'm in the BD. I've been to the post uh, office, and now I've been to the BD. Yes, so, yes. All you're, the sites. You're making the rounds here mm -hmm. in, in the city. So uh, we were watching NXT tonight, and I don't think you watch NXT regularly. No. So, but we forced you to watch NXT tonight. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was some great tidbits from someone who's not watched the show uh, yeah. often, but uh, we thought while you're visiting here in Toronto, why not do a little bit of a show with you? And mm -hmm. I think today was a good time because not only is it WrestleMania week, which everyone is super excited about and super hyped about, maybe we could talk a little bit about some, some mania preview, yeah. but then just, oh, I don't know, out of the blue, Everyone's favorite pal, Phil, just decided to stop by Ariel Hawani's The MMA Hour and had a whole long conversation. Mm. And maybe you were like us and listened to the whole thing. Yeah, maybe I did. Yeah. Maybe the, we're going to chat about it. The real mania and event. Exactly. So uh, we got a lot to talk about. Today. Yeah. So I think, I think just right off the top, heads up, it's going to be quite a bit before we'll get into NXT this week. We've got a lot to preview. Uh, I... We'll preview Standard Liver at the end of the show, but uh, before that, we can talk a bit of Raw. We can talk about, um, yeah, the, the CM Punk interview and get a whole load of plugs out the way because uh, we got a lot to plug. Yeah, again, it's WrestleMania season, so it's the, sorry, Stand and, Stand Deliver, and Deliver season, season yeah. here. So uh, there's a lot going on. Yeah, we're actually going to be uh, hightailing out of here in, in just a few wee hours, meaning Davey's got a flight to New York tomorrow to go on his way to get to Philly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to leave sometime tomorrow evening, Thursday morning to get there by, by driving. So uh, we're going to be on the move this week, but we will be still recording shows. So of course, follow us poison Rana in your podcast app, because we're going to be doing these road diaries. We just did one for collision in London as well. So like follow us and, and, and tag along in our journeys. And of course the socials, cause we'll always be posting stuff. If you want to know what two shawamas means, listen to the show. That's, oh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Two shawarmas. That's right. Yes. You can only understand if you listen to that yeah. show. Uh, but yeah, so lots of stuff going on and there's lots of stuff to plug. So throughout, we'll let you know what everything that we got going on, because not only will we be in Philly, but our hearts will still be in this city because we have a sold out WrestleMania watch party. Steph's going to be there I hanging out. There, yeah. You're excited for WrestleMania. Yeah. So some come say hi to some of our friends who will, who will be there. I think Sam Jackson's going to be there. Yeah. Uh, no, Jesse from the six is going to be with us. So he Jesse will be six. with us. Uh, yeah. Sam Jackson will be there. Yeah. Super chill. Travi Sims will be there. So we have a, a like, it's going to be beyond sold out for this event. Both yeah. Nights. It's uh, I kind of finalized the guest list like minutes before NXT uh, today, just had my last shift at work. Uh, we are full inside, um, but we do have uh, patio seating available. 
Uh, we do have heaters, but it can still get quite cold. So if you do want to come down, it's going to be a party. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, 309 King Street West at Gabby's. Um, just dress warm, you know, yeah. layers. It's it's not it's not crazy cold anymore. Just wrap it's appropriately. <laughs> it's Wear cold. layers, yeah. sit by the fire, enjoy it's WrestleMania night one and two. There's always a chance. You know, some people don't show up, whatever. Yeah. If you want to risk it, come along. Uh, but we are sold out of online sales now. Um, which is great. Like these things have been such a success and we, we want to keep on doing them. And and we got some great prizes as well. You picked up some awesome uh, like replica stone cold vests. And like all sorts I, of stuff. I'm making a prediction with these prizes that end of night two, we will see stone cold deliver one more stunner right. to the rock. Oh. So uh, yeah. we're giving away an Austin vest, like a proper leather yeah, yeah. stone cold Steve Austin vest on night one and two. We've got the classic, rock just bring it shirt uh we have a fiend mask got a fiend mask dragon lee mask gray mysterio mask yeah. um got a larry the dog shirt <gasps> um who uh, uh may or may not have signed an nda uh, yeah. we'll get into that um and yeah like loads of figures and stuff so uh lots of prizes to win uh if you come along um but the real show is that that's for toronto and shout out anyone who bought a ticket uh we won't be there but you know party hard and take some photos for us because we we will be there in spirit but if you're in philly for wrestlemania and you want to say hello to the bde well you can because wrestlemania sunday we're hosting a meetup in philly at drinkers pub hmm, i wonder what we're going to be doing <laughs> there at drinkers pub in philly uh around 2 30 ish p.m come hang out it's free to join in just we're going to grab some drinks everyone show up party a few people have already messaged from all over the world and the the feeling is incredible so shout out all you people and i can't wait to see some some listeners out there yep uh this pub is like away from kind of the commotion like all the bars are going to be just not so uh by the stadium so but we're starting early, so you've got plenty of time to uh, get to the stadium after the event. Uh, 2.30 to 4.30, it's 1903 Chestnut Street in Philadelphia. Um, I've decided when, when booking these places, I just like picking places that does what it says on the tin. Last year, it was pasta lovers. This mm -hmm. time, it's drinkers pub right uh who knows what's it what it's we gonna be shirt. in minneapolis we need shirts Dickie. Jordan. Dickie. Dickie. Jordan. we need drinkers pub shirts drinkers ordered pub to shirts. the airbnb by thursday yeah <laughs> chop it's coming soon uh yeah so we got a lot of things going on uh whether it's here whether it's in philly and it's it's super exciting and on top of that we'll be at all sorts of different events we have a giant crew people will be at different shows i know john away are going to the hitchcock show we're going to uh the, the ecw tribute show we're going to be all over the place scattered so yeah i know i know john and way with like Sino and wh and and others are doing like little little diary entries for all the different shows they're going to uh we started doing this as well just like immediate thoughts uh just recording right away uh obviously not going live but uh we'll be putting up multiple things yeah. throughout the day uh on sunday morning uh time to be confirmed we'll be releasing our uh nxt stand and deliver show we figured look who's gonna have time to listen to stand and deliver post show between yeah. stand and deliver and wrestlemania and we kind of want to enjoy our day yes. as well and it's already crazy enough doing two shows in a day so we'll be giving our nxt thoughts and stat and uh wrestlemania night one thoughts on sunday morning yes stand and deliver at 12 noon on saturday and shades I, on the whole show i absolutely will not be going brayden wake up we gotta we gotta record we gotta see sean spears okay fuck. let me let me smoke a joint first okay <laughs> that's absolutely a, not gonna need a happen. few for, yeah. for 12 o'clock noon on saturday but yeah uh we're we're really excited so again follow uh, all the socials and, and stuff but uh the real main event of wrestlemania this year cm punk <laughs> Yeah, Stephanie, Steph, what yeah. are your thoughts on Jack Perry? <laughs> I don't even have an issue with Jack Perry. You know, like yeah. I don't, I don't even have an issue with Jack Perry. But no, that was the best interview <laughs> ever. And I'm usually really down on Ariel. He actually did a good job there. He actually did do a good job there. Yeah. Um, but no, I thought it was incredible. I never thought I'd hear Punk talk about this stuff. So when he just started going. And it was like two hours long. Um, it was very interesting to hear like his words, his 
perspective on everything that happened because it's not just that he hasn't talked about this shit like no one has mm. except who kid yeah dj who kid oh yeah that was it him. that yeah. was the yeah, so it was so weird I, I, finally I, hearing it and yeah. he wasn't the best witness but <laughs> he was <laughs> yes. the most knowledgeable witness um but yeah i thought it was uh amazing there's like so much to like unpack. it's like where do you so start yeah. i will say like as you said i i thought ariel did a great job and what i liked is uh how you know, as soon as Punk gave like a tiny bit of something, he'd mm -hmm. jump on that. Say yeah. whether it be the the Vince thing, like, oh yeah, I saw Vince. He hugged at the gym. We said we'd see each other again. And oh well, what happened? A lot of things yeah. came up, Ariel. Well, let's talk about that. You yeah. know, I yeah. thought I thought it flowed as an interview really, really well. I did not see the runtime before I started. I watched Raw on a delay last night, finished at about 12.30 and was like, yeah, I'll watch this interview before. It's now two o'clock and I'm looking, fuck, how long is left of this thing? Uh, but it was definitely one of those things. I didn't want to just listen to sound bites or just read quotes on Twitter. I had to kind of sit down and, and watch the whole thing. The and context. love him or hate him, CM Punk, Phil love Brooks him. is just fascinating and continues to be fascinating. He's such a compelling speaker. Um, such he's a compelling character a compelling yeah. person right like that's why there's so much interest behind these and i just think back to like the biggest wrestling podcast ever was the yeah. Colt cabana cm punk yeah. podcast it was so big that it was brought up in that master of none netflix show on a sitcom yeah. i was like wait sorry <laughs> did, did they just reference a cm punk podcast like that was the biggest thing and i feel already that this is like the the next big one and yeah. it's it's weird because you thought we'd hear like the stories of him like oh i'd never come back to wrestling but instead he's got all this stuff that he has not talked about ever mm. that mm. so many people have not talked about like uh i i have just jotted notes of in order of some stuff let's, that he mentioned let's do it. Right. so like he mentioned nick khan basically being the one to bring him back into rest into wwe yeah and the the mention of while on nick khan that there was somewhat of an open door like pre backstage years. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. like yeah. And that may, did make me wonder, like, what was that about? What would, like, I'm trying to think what even would have been going on at that time. It's quite the revelation how close he is with Nick Khan, um, mm -hmm. them having the same agent and him being in talks with Nick Khan long before the AEW stuff. Like, very interesting. I think that if we would kind of known about their relationship, which does seem to be pretty strong um, properly before that, it would have been so much more inevitable that he'd end up back where he yeah. is. I, I I don't have the dates in front of me, but I'd imagine it would have coincided with the like legal issues between Punk and WWE being yeah. over because something I found interesting is like I think back to you know Jericho saying that he reached out for a chat with Punk and Punk blew him off. Um Corey Graves put out tweets a few years ago being like, hey, we were like best friends and he completely cut me off and hearing punk kind of talk about how look i was being sued by the company i couldn't really trust anyone there because mm. i whatever i say even if it is to my friend could go and could yeah. blow up yeah. and and therefore it like that completely justified that for me and go oh yeah that does make a whole lot of sense and then maybe once all those issues were out the way you can start thinking and a, and a nick khan sort of bridging the gap there trying to bring in but we we figured when when he was on that Fox show, it's like okay, this is going to be the the back door into WWE. Very similarly to how we saw you know Sting on the two K game, Goldberg on the two K yeah. game, yeah. how they've used that to get people in. It did kind of feel like that was the way it might go, but obviously it didn't happen that way. Yeah, yeah so I, I definitely thought that was kind of interesting and like genuinely, I think this was needed for like his PR essentially mm -hmm. because. He came across like the guy that like a lot of us fans remember him yeah. sounding like, right? And I think a lot of the like going around punching people, he didn't say it got to him, but the way he spoke kind of was like, hey, like if that's how you view me, then like, cool, I'll make money from that. And like, I think maybe that in a weird way, he he was like, why, why was that the story? Like, I'm yeah. like a per perfectly fine person. I'm nice to people and over generous to a lot of people. And I think he cleared the air of some of the, like a lot of people who aren't the crazy tribalist fans uh, who, who might be like, Hey, I just like wrestling. And he's basically like, so do I like, Hey, like he may have poked some fun at Tony Khan. I think that's the, the real, like some of the issues there and mostly the elite, but 
when Ariel asked him about the all in situation with Jack Perry, like that was something that was maybe a negative that I took from this interview was where he's like, Oh, I didn't punch him or anything, but like, ah, oh, who doesn't like a little choking? Yeah. You know, punk, a lot of us, you know, we, we agree with you, but also like, wait a second, you're saying it's okay to just like scrap someone where it's yeah. like, he didn't necessarily explain how it got to that. He just mentioned the choking. So that's kind of like, all right, well, if you still assaulted a dude, maybe he, the other guy swung first. We don't know. I but. mean, I, still, like, the truth does lie somewhere in the middle, yeah. usually. And I did feel there was a lot of, you know, I, I went over calmly and I was like, <laughs> hey, Jack, what's going on? It was and probably like, more like, yo, fuckhead. Yeah, like. <laughs> Luke Perry's kid. I do see it from both, like, both sides. Yeah. Uh, I still don't think you should be just putting your hands on someone. But he, he says, like, hey, how I grew up, that's how wrestlers dealt with issues like the people it's i how, watched yeah, and wrestlers have dealt with issues and then get the lot. get undertaker's bag with knives and guns in it while you're at no i'm joking but like similar like i know what he's saying because he he then deflected it by saying like that it's wrestling like people fight he also went into the factor of saying after the fact that referring to i think the original brawl out mm -hmm. he brings up like sorry we got in a fight i can't talk about it they can't talk about it but I wanted to make money from it and they didn't want to. Yeah. And that's where I'm like, yeah, that's how grown um, people work. Him not being the one to ask for the NDA is very interesting. So that he threw that in. That makes it sound like it's something that someone else did yeah. that they don't want to be talked about. Yeah. Okay. So I don't want to start a rumor mill or anything, but I know this is only like a day removed and it's still probably being picked apart as far as it's a long interview. But that part of it, he met, it's Ariel who tries to pick at him saying, hey, that injury, where did that come from? And Punk does not yeah, answer that question yeah. and refers to the NDA. So that could easily, again, that could easily start rumors of, hey, did they injure him in this fight? Did someone like actually hurt him? That mm. Or whether caused? he had something like niggling from the match that then yeah. got like made so, worse yeah, afterwards, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, so that was, that was definitely something I, I picked up on. But I think um, what you were saying before, like, he he did need to do this because he needed to. what he did to, to Jack Perry, like, I'm not going to advocate for violence, right? And saying, oh, I just choked him is um, not not good, mm. okay? Never should have come to that. Um, but I do think that once he was fired from AW and the way Tony did it with the collision, I feared for my life yeah. statement, um, I thought that was really bad the way that Tony did it, because for me, someone that's been a fan of his for so long, like I'm used to people hating on him and it's fine because he's that kind of person. Like it, he's a very divisive, but I think that turns so many people on him. Um, like this strength of Tony's statement and, and Tony saying that to a point where I thought like, no matter what he did, like this is, this is kind of unfair. Like this is kind of a, character assassination so i'm glad that he got to say his side and obviously his side is like skewed from like his perspective there's still going to be more stuff that we don't know like you're right it's somewhere in the middle mm. it's definitely not that like punk is this gracious guy that was like trying to diffuse things and then just you know sure. put a little yeah. chokehold on but i think at least he got to say something because i think the way he was painted going out of aw was bad to the point where people I know a lot of people were saying, oh, if he turns up at Survivor Series, people will will boo him. And like Twitter isn't real life, of course, but there was a, a, the most anti-punk sentiment that I'd seen um, was there. And, you know, I don't advocate for fighting. He shouldn't have gotten a fight backstage, but he's definitely not the only wrestler, do it. not the only wrestler yeah, in the course. AEW locker room to do it or in WWE or anywhere. The, the thing I, there's a couple of things that I just find a little like, strange and mm -hmm. that is so much of punk leaving originally was you know wanted that culture to be changed yeah you know the idea of maybe fighting backstage and sorting yeah. out amongst the boys wrestlers court he's yeah. he's constantly like said how fucking ridiculous wrestlers court is and then in this case it's kind of i don't know it sounds like he'd be more of a fan of that kind of thing mm -hmm. you know and there's a few things like that when going to what uh like you know aw isn't a business it's just yeah. a place to put on good matches or whatever and you go well you like that's what a you wanted an alternate 
yeah. an alternative. And that's what AEW is. If AEW was doing, you know, oh, we grab a hold as Raw rolls on, on as Dynamite moves on, it's just doing what WWE is doing. And that's where I found there were a few things where it's, I understand, um, like, I, I absolutely think there was pettiness. And I think Tony Khan needed to nip stuff in the bud, like, right away. Oh, we can get it. <laughs> but there's, there's certainly stuff AEW was built on, you know, the Young Bucks, who have made a whole career on, quote unquote, killing the business in being told by people, hey, you shouldn't be spamming all these super kicks and yeah. doing all these flips. Okay, but it's I'm selling more merchandise than anyone ever has on the indies. And that rolled over to AEW, and that is the style and the product they're presenting. So if then a CM Punk is coming in and going against that and essentially trying to make a, a WWE product, it's it's not what that is about and it kind of goes against why he some of the reasons that he left in the first place so that was something i was trying to like get my head around a bit because no 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 so i like i totally agree with you i think punk's problem and i don't know if if he's actually learned this lesson from this situation he probably hasn't because he's so stubborn um is he what like wants things his way so like i've always said and um and like I've had people agree with me on this when they've thought about it, that like Punk's biggest problem with AEW was that he did not get there at the beginning, that he he wasn't Jericho, he wasn't Cody. Um, so like when he got in there, he was like working from that perspective. Whereas like we all know if we really think about the history of AEW, that it was basically created for Punk, but he didn't want a part of it until it was proven successful. So then I think when he got there, he felt out of place because these other guys had laid the groundwork and they built co the company. And I think that maybe like, yeah, he did want all that stuff that you were saying, like not being like WWE, more like looseness, wrestlers in charge. And he got it and was like, oh no, like this, this actually isn't for me. Yeah, like, actually, I let me sell that. out. Yeah. But he's like a guy that's <laughs> I mean, like, I want an open relationship. He gets one and then he's like, actually, I'm going back to the wife because I can't handle this. Like, right. I need the rules. <laughs> or seeing, yeah, seeing the attendances drop and be like, yeah. hmm, maybe WWE's been successful for a reason. And I, yeah. like, at this point, I am chasing, as he said, like, you know, to start with, it was, hey, can I feed myself, have a roof over my head mm -hmm. and do that through wrestling? And that's how you measure success. Cool, I've yeah. done that. Now can I be the top guy in the indies where I'm living very comfortably? I've done that. I've then moved to WWE cool, I'm now very secure, right, now I want the next goal, WrestleMania. And then it's it keeps going bigger, and maybe when he saw that, like, this alternative yeah. isn't going to ever be to the level that WWE is, I'm, I'm going to chase a he different goal. totally thought, like, um, that he'd be okay with, like, this size of, of AEW and whatever, but he never actually saw AEW as as anything when he got there like he saw himself as bigger than it and like mm. that's why he wouldn't sign in the first place because he didn't know what it was going to be and then when he does brawl out and he has a fight with hangman ph he's like this guy that's never done anything and it's like okay this this is like an aw chat like this is the, like a guy that this company was built in the back of but like to you he's never done anything because he's not been in wwe yeah. like you and um i think like he really showed himself that moment what he thought of the company. Yeah, I see mm. you, you, you listening to the whole thing. He came across like, again, like an actual nice guy, but mm -hmm. there is like some arguments and more things that you would want to pick at in some of the things he said. He's coming across more like classic wrestler. I'm not yeah. comparing him to Hulk Hogan or The Rock, but he's compare. He's, he's slowly like, yeah, we're seeing things in his perspective. Mm -hmm. So in certain ways, like I do agree with a lot of the things he said. Uh, referring to Tony Khan and maybe yeah. like Tony Khan needs someone to be like the boss and not just him. There yeah. is kind of what it gets at. Like he gave his case of like why he did what he did and why he wanted out of there. But on the, the flip side of it, as much as I think like I came across like, Oh man, I, I still love this guy. He's great. But the other side of the coin is like, there are so many times listening, like you, you you're, you're telling me like you just care about the money like you just mm -hmm. care about the money you're coming across this way and you are contradicting yourself because what you guys just said like i think back there's so many 
internet people who've scoured years of content and look back at the Bucks and Bullet Club. They they said they were trying to get him for fucking ever. They yeah. said they would text yeah. him all the time, like come back, come. The so, original all in. Exactly. So Chicago, like you right? you you imagine that was all there for him, and he still said no. And then when he finally came in, he's in this interview saying that the elite didn't want him there to begin with. So if that is true, like maybe there was a whole rift from the get go, then they were just like destined to. Well, it's the, the Cabana stuff happened between the first all in and punk joining. Right. Right. Yeah. They, yeah. I think the the elite did want him in from the beginning. I think it was more Cody leading it though, but yeah, he was, he was never going to sign on to that. But like this C and CM Punk stands for capitalist. And like <laughs> he has always been that way. If you actually look at the old documentaries of him, like the, his WWE one and before that, for a, a guy that like promotes the other stuff that he does, he is always talking about making money, like even before people were calling him out on it. Yeah. So he has always had that mentality. And he didn't see the money in all in. And he didn't see the money in um, in AEW in the beginning. Yeah, for sure. He sounds very negative on AEW, but then he was definitely trying to save face by repeatedly being, "Oh, yeah. I, I'm I'm not trying to shit on them, like, but no Tony Khan's a, Tony's a clown." But anyways, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not hang fuck dumb fucking hangman. Pay. No, I'm not. I'm not trying to shit on. But like, he, yeah. The hang, what about hang, the hangman stuff? Because in in a way, he paints it as like, "Hey, I trusted this guy. We ran mm -hmm. through rehearsal of a promo, and then he went off script and like forced me to." Yeah. Like think on my feet and it was not approved. And he was pretty angry with that. Mm. Went to Tony with a lawyer right away and was pissed. Like, yeah, what that, like he's putting it in that perspective. So that's new information because mm. I always took it as, you know, the promo was going as it was. And then that one line on workers yeah. rights came out and punks like, excuse me. Whereas this, he's painting it as we had something completely else prepared. And then we went out there and like right from the get go and he's saying it was loud and I couldn't even really hear what was going on and all this sort of stuff. And I'm a big hangman page fan, but if that is the case, that is a real dick move, isn't it? And, yeah. and it could, because you could like punk is, is very good and quick on his feet where it didn't completely derail the segment. Someone else, it could have just been cricket, like silence, like, Fuck, sorry. What did you say? What am I doing now? This is where it's going. So uh, I get his anger. I I do find the, I, I always found the line of jeopardizing a million dollar gate weird because, you know, like if we know there's real animosity there, that's going to sell tickets even more. And, yeah. he, and he then goes on to say, hey, we could make money off of this yeah. afterwards, yeah. which so that is, again, a bit of a like contradiction. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I understand like more so than just he dropped a worker's rights line. Um, See, there, there's there's two things, right? Like, okay, so to me, if I go to work and someone chokes me out, I'm probably going to be pretty upset. <laughs> if I go to work and someone says something to me I don't like, maybe in front of a lot of people, yeah, I'd still be upset. But like, I don't know, like his, it's it's either his way or the highway. It seems he's yeah. like he's very hypocritical and like, oh no no no, I'm he says it. Me and The Rock, we're allowed to swear and do whatever the fuck we want. Mm. But then it's not the other way around because it's like Hangman to him is nothing. He doesn't, yeah. he didn't know who that guy was. And he gave Hangman like six receipts from that. Yeah. Like TV, yeah. press conference, like says, like dark segments after the show. Like, okay. Yeah. And apparently he had words with him after. Yeah. Being like, I get it. You're sticking up your friend. But that was like. He's I, in the wrong with Hangman for sure. Yeah, like he he totally he's totally going off. And again, like Hangman did that because I we imagine he's friends with people who like all knew wanted to, to support other people. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Like there's there's definitely ways around. I am the biggest elite fan. I, I love the Bucks, Hangman, Kenny, all those guys. And like I I do think like if this guy was willing to make money, mm -hmm. they would not be in this situation they would be legit super hot right now in another alternate universe right now for there all was a huge fault, competitor vince would have booked oh that my match god and you but are fucking doing this the match problem right is like actually tony Khan? Tony Khan. Yeah. tony's the problem and i think that you know he was right to say that he brought this tony tony didn't sort it out i will never forget and this is before like brawl out happened this got like in my like burned into my mind the day before that show, Tony going on Wrestling Observer and 
saying that the problems in the locker room were like a good thing. And then the next <laughs> fucking day this happens. And I remember I was on the streets of Chicago and I stopped in my tracks and was like, what is this man on that he's just said this? And then the next day you get brawl out. Like the buck stops with Tony Khan. He could have sorted all of this and he didn't. And I think that all of AW's problems in the past and the ones that are to come are from stuff that Tony Khan refuses to address. And I'm not saying he has to address stuff publicly. He doesn't address stuff backstage. And this is like the biggest example. And I think that punk, capitalist punk, um, as much as, you know, he had a lot of stuff to say about Vince McMahon, um, he's obviously an evil person, but he definitely saw like, okay, yes, Vince would have sorted this. Like Vince can like be the bad guy, like in that yeah. way. Um, and Tony, like, yeah, it is, he is too nice. And he's very lucky. He's so fucking rich that he can keep it, doing Every this. company, every company needs the the bad guy. Yeah. And, it, and if the boss doesn't want to do it, they hire it. Like JR yeah. was that role for the longest time in WWE. Yeah. He was the guy who had to fire people, discipline people, stuff like that. You've you've got to have that role. Otherwise, and if if Tony is you know, I am the boss that I want to keep everyone happy and be everyone's friend and whatever. That's cool. But he needs to have someone to mm -hmm. still get them to hammer that out. Because so many wasting jobs. money on another TV show just to try and keep this star. Yeah. Dumbest just, idea ever. Like, yeah, terrible. like, like we, we could see the writing on the wall as yeah, fans, right? Never Watching. Gonna work. Yeah, never. But, but towards the end of it, it seemed like something was off. It, he says, mm -hmm. I wanted, I tried to quit so many times. And I, he said, no, 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 stay, stay. And then, Finally, we get to the the issues with Jack Perry, where he he does the whole "I want to do the rental car," where he 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 literally describes in this interview. He says Tony Schiavone went and got me. Then I had to be the one to step in. Like, yeah. why was I the one to do that? What what the hell's going on here? And then that's what's like the snowball effect to like really it's the hangman domino effect, the butterfly effect yeah. of traveling all the way through to where we are today. But then Jack, like the Jack Perry thing where he explains, like I'm watching this and I knew this was a direct shot. Like did that, did you need to like, like, I don't know. Like you, did you need to go and address that right then and there? Like you're about to open, like who gives a fuck? Like, but he wanted, I like he, he wanted, wanted out, so he fired. saw that as an he excuse, right? Yeah, he had to. So much. Yeah, so him and he doesn't. He didn't even sound that mad about Jack Perry. No. You know, he was like, "I like Jack," <laughs> like, but yeah. it's like, okay, so future like WrestleMania main event, yeah. is Jungle Jack Perry versus. He'll be CM fine Punk. when Jack Perry oh, shows up in NXT. He'll be fine down the performance. Yeah, center when they got money. Like there. they won't be afraid to use yeah. this in storylines. I mean, I I think as well with. With Perry, if you just look at his career, he was he was super over, you know, mm -hmm. in in mm -hmm. Jurassic Express and the the feud with Christian when he when he finally defeated him, he was he was red hot, and then he turned heel, and that worked for a little bit, and then you had that that four pillars, like especially that segment oh, when feud. all of them had their promo, and he was super exposed. His promo was incredibly weak, and I feel it was from that point where. I mean, I mean, that was before he turned heel, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? But I, I felt it was from there when people really started to just turn on him as, yeah. as fans. And this was pre any punk stuff coming out. And I could see as a performer, he's probably getting frustrated. Like I was like, I was one of the top guys in this company yeah. and I was red hot. And then I'm in this title match, the biggest match of my career so far. And you know what the internet's like, they've all turned on him. And then, you know, he's friends with the elite and he's, trying to stick up for those guys and stuff and it, it seems immature like i mean he's young like it seems like a just immature teenage almost thing yeah. to do and like and it got out of control and maybe he's trying to win brownie points with his his friends on wednesdays or whatever but uh like that like and punk almost in this interview kind of seemed to see that as well because he yeah. he didn't go in as hard on jack perry as yeah, he went oh, I just choked Tony. him out a little. He went on Tony a he lot. He went out on Tony very, and still honest. Hangman. Like, yeah, and, and Hangman as well. And he didn't go in on the Elite or like Young Bucks. Like yeah, really. I never yeah. felt there was any issue with Kenny to no. really begin with. But, the only uh, thing I wanted him to say, like just for my own head canon, is like, oh, Kenny's 
lovely and it was never Kenny. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he didn't get that. Yeah. Yeah. For me, but, yeah, you know, I was like, waiting for I that. I truly yeah, believe. Like, yeah, it, yeah. It, it I'm believing that. Yeah, yeah. I, we're on that. the same page. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, I was like, he didn't say anything bad about him. And so. that's not like, I, I don't dislike the Bucks at all. I, I don't dislike anyone in this story. Yeah. I, I like punk a lot and I like hangman a lot but I don't dislike anyone else so it's funny that like literally my two favorite active wrestlers like had yeah. this beef it's hilarious it's crazy but I really see something in Kenny where I just can't imagine Kenny being like Angry actually anyway. I mean I'm just picturing the brawl and him you know saving Larry and he take which apparently Larry. he did and switch He's like, oh, yeah fuck. Yeah, 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 exactly. He didn't say anything bad about Kenny, and I was happy about that. Mm -hmm. I think I think he really came off like genuine, but there he were great as well. Can I just say? Yes, yes, really he's did. looking good uh, mm -hmm. with his uh, arm brace oh, yeah. on his. What well. an accessory! It's, yeah, it's really nice. I I think uh, he'll be doing a lot for this weekend. He mentioned mm -hmm. he's on like the panels, and like he made it kind of seem like he might be on commentary for like. I mean, he seemed like he was like. He was saying, I'm ready, essentially. Yeah. He's like, he yeah, I, to work I it. could do he WrestleMania. It. And, and he would break it again. He'll break it right away. I, yeah. I'm sorry. Like, oh. I, I think uh, I think it's not a far off thing to say that maybe a, he realized AEW wasn't the place and that if Shawn Michaels can run NXT now, then in another five years, <laughs> maybe does. they'll ask him. So I, I could like, totally. That's unless, the way I got out of this. I, I, unless, I don't think he'll be re like. He sounds like he's still going to be wrestling as soon as he's in, he's healed. But like, just don't the, piss on his shoes, right? Just, like, as long as no one pisses on his shoes, he'll be running NXT. Like, I, I don't know. I think what, he will be. Like, no one would have ever predicted Shawn Michaels would. Yeah. Yeah. Cody um, and Punk will like, be running yeah. WWE. Oh yeah, and The Rock. The the other thing I <laughs> I found interesting was him saying about uh guaranteed money mm -hmm. like oh yeah which I, I i get to an extent i i guess he's talking about that hunger right like yeah, yeah. if you if your income is essentially commission like think yeah. if you're working a commission job the harder you work the more sales you make the more money you're going to make and that is essentially what the wrestling business used to be like if you are at the top of the card and you sell out this building and the pay-per-view gets a million buys or whatever, like you're going to make better money than if the arena is half full and you make 500,000 pay-per-view buys. Like that's how it works. Now it's just everything's guaranteed. Yeah. But on the flip side, it's like, don't you want wrestlers to be just like healthy and supported and, and yeah. that kind of thing as well, which is part of that culture that he was trying to change yeah yeah i was really I, I thought that was weird it, it almost was like an underhanded comment and then i think it clicked in his mind of how he, he came across and he tried to maybe yeah. correct it I but think he expressed himself i yeah in that regard i i, I was disagreeing because it's like hey like although he was explaining that they didn't do shit with his injury and all that stuff i felt like he was purposely saying <laughs> yeah. that to like really get at them but uh like he he was making it sound like these people like oh money and all that like yeah these yeah. wrestlers they it's a big deal when you sign with a wwe or an AEW these days look at the osprey rev pro thing with tony khan like they made it a big deal like mm. look I, I can buy my mom a house now and stuff it's like yeah why are you like yeah you were the fucking guy against the establishment and now you are the establishment and mm. you'll probably work in the establishment in like 10 years or even less than that so it, as much as I, again, thought he was great, he's very hypocritical in a lot of yeah. the stuff he says. But w that's CM Punk, and I guess we'll be... That's can, people as well. Yeah, we, like, we've all been hypocritical about hypocrite. stuff, right? So like, that's just, like, what he is. And I think there's still, like, a lot of money to be made with, like, maybe one day we get, you know, a match with him and Hangman or the Bucks or never, never. and it just never, you know, comes up. <laughs> Some of the NDA stuff, like... Him giving his side of the story, maybe this causes other people to go, oh, well, he said these things. Let me say yeah. this or let me say There's X. There's people you know? that saw shit that didn't. Exactly. NDAs yeah, that exactly. Will say there Now that he's kind of. Mrs. Know, a. Steel, I'm looking at you. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a few things like that could come out because of what well, people say that this is what he said. So yeah. let's get someone else's he's side. He's broken the seal. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Cat's out the bag. Um interesting how he went in on vince as well yes like yeah. the most open i think anyone wwe's really the, i think spoken the best about it. comments that i've heard on vince because there's been a lot of um john you know, cena yeah there's <laughs> well john cena is a different kind of cat like uh, i i don't know I, you can't see him and you can't hear, hear him apparently either because cena, think, he right? has not really said that much yeah. about vince mcmahon but a lot of 
there's a lot of this whole, my favorite thing that he said was Vince tries to be your dad. And I'm like, I've already got a dad. And I, I felt that a lot because like, that's always how I feel. And I always think that wrestlers have like the worst daddy issues because they all suck up to Vince McMahon. Like they need a dad, like mm. a second dad. Um, so I love him just being like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want a dad. Um, and I think that it was actually very shocking to hear him mention Benoit because no one talks about Benoit yeah, yeah. either. Like as an actual, you know, I'm a WWE wrestler doing this. Oh, show. the thing with the kid like, as well. The that story. was a oh. really sad story. But I do think that um, it was, you know, like a, a good like example, like to to relate it to. And I think his comments on Vince, like like saying, you know, <coughs> put the focus on the victims. Yeah. Um, like get him out of here. He ruined his life by trying to ruin other people's life. I like that comment as well because so many of these guys, like they end up ruining their own lives in the end as well. And in of the course, process. Yeah. And that man's life is ruined. His legacy is ruined. I think he'll die in jail. Like it's, you know, allegations, obviously. But yeah, I think Punk's comments were were really, really good. And I think, yeah, too many of the it shows that he's not scared and he doesn't have yeah, to be scared. Yeah. It, it also makes you realize how gone Vince yeah, is now. He can say like that. he's yeah. not coming back. Like yeah. TKO yeah, have would. very much said that he's not coming back. Yeah. There's no way he's coming back. And now you don't have to be. And and sure, like I, I get like a, a Becky Lynch feeling like I, I get these people feeling conflicted and, mm. and trying to process their emotions about it. But uh, I just found it quite refreshing to hear someone be like, yeah, I, I at times had a good relationship with him, but fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck and like him. he should never come back. And he could, yeah. it, it's something that could have potentially in a different time, yeah. like if it wasn't the success it is right now, completely destroy the business. Yeah, for sure. So that was pretty much what came out yesterday. And I'm sure people, again, will dissect even more of it. People will come out <clears throat> and, and try to give their sides of different stories and retaliate. You already saw AEW wrestlers on social media pretty much being like, hey, like, AEW's that was funny great. though, because then we got firings for the first time. Yeah. And we then were. we got some fire. Yeah. Sorry. Jared Joel is gone and the boys <laughs> pour one out. There's a few there, first AEW firings. But yeah. like, that's, if that's what it's got to be, then that's what it's got to be. Like, sure. sorry. It's just like, that's just the business. But um, another, another thing that came out of it was Meltzer. He mentioned, you know, the five star matches and the Meltzer, <laughs> Meltzer on his show, I think yesterday night was referencing like, well, I mean, such a goof. Then why were you asking me for all the help with like ratings? TV and ratings. This and that and <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, I, I do think punk wasn't necessarily innocent in his AEW run of not talking to certain people and mm. giving out mm. information and stuff like that. So, uh, I don't know, but also Dave still thinks it's The Rock versus Triple H at WrestleMania. <laughs> so uh. <laughs> I did. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's just timing or whatever. But the fact that you know someone comes out very publicly, like your main star, and goes, "They ain't running a business there," yeah. and then it's like, "All right, let's let's do some business moves and <laughs> yeah. release and then, Dasha." It's and, the CEO's first move. But I, I did find the the releases in itself, like the fact that they. The company started and they were like hey we're not gonna do that we're, yeah. we're gonna want a contract and realistically what are you saving by getting rid of slim j who you know yeah like when you got a yeah. miro sat at home doing fuck all like it's it was a strange crop of people that the, the only one that really means anything well, that sounds mean, but is Dasha. Like, Dasha is C doing a lot yeah, of work. Yeah. She's bilingual. Um, she does, like, multiple jobs. Um, and In there, day like, one. Yes, uh, and seems like someone that's, like, an actual asset mm. to the company. And I thought that was that was a very odd release. I remember her um, when she signed with AW when the pandemic started. She did a very good talk as Jericho where she talked about, like, all her other interests and stuff. She seems like a really cool, intelligent woman. So that one to me was really strange because what is Justin Roberts gonna just announce everything? Or they, they have Cruz? they, they have just Bobby brought Cruz, in yeah. a they just brought in a new female announcer as well, I believe. Oh, okay. like a I week thought she ago was an something. interviewer. I didn't think she. Was oh, an maybe announcer. I'm not sure. But it's still just like with her, especially speaking two languages and stuff. Mm. It's just like that's an odd one. I mean, or I some Jack. Yeah, see. like a lot of these people, they're not really been used lately. So I guess yeah. that's their reasoning, right? So you can't really be like upset. That works. He actually had a vision for Ring of Honor. 
Um, and, and yeah. instead of like, because it feels like he picked up all those, like, like he had no idea what to do with Ring of Honor, yeah. and he still doesn't, still other no, than just no. keep yeah. it going. Um, yeah, but the firing's odd. He I, should let Miro go. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, I, I think that's the thing. I think he's holding on to these talents that are clearly hoping to just jump right to WWE as yeah. soon as they're gone. And he doesn't Wait, he doesn't that, want that. Jose? Ripped Jose? Yeah, gone? Jack's oh, home, Jose. Jack gone. Jose? But yet yeah, Alex Abriante stays. Yeah. Oh my God. But, okay, wait. Justice needs to be served. But it, yeah. it is like when what? when it was something that were like, hey, we are gonna want these contracts, and you're releasing a Anthony Henry who is yeah. just suffering an injury and that kind of thing. It's I I get right cuts and things right. and whatever, but I don't know how much money they're saving by That's getting rid of these guys. Whereas a Miro, a Malachi Black, a mm. all these other people that just sit out half the year, Matt Hardy more than half. Gets offered a new contract. Yeah. Man what do you mean? He's showing up at Mania. He a says. living. <laughs> he steals a living. But um, you're right. But th this is why you should never make these declarations of where, like, you can say, "I want to make the business better. I want to change things." Mm. He's a uh, not just Tony, but like the company has let down um, like women and minorities from their original like mission statements. You probably shouldn't make such strong statements as we're never going to release anyone like the bad guys do, because at some point you're going to like, it should probably just enough to be like, we're going to try and make this business a bit better. And nicer you know, it's going to come back and bite you like points. going yeah, way back will. to that sloppy shop line from yeah. Taz. And then yeah. what happens like a week later, it's like, yeah, I, I feel like maybe uh, after this punk stuff, maybe there's changes that like Tony Khan, because, you know, he can't take criticism that well. And he no, loves to he use Twitter. Be. Maybe he says, all right, like, I hear you. And or is he going to gross balls? Like, maybe he goes, maybe there is some things I need to change and, and does that. Or he just, you know, pipe, tries to shoot back and say some certain things and. He'll say something repute, right. Like, dumb this we week. don't know. Yeah. Like, He's got like he'll be in front of the media twice. Uh, but during this week, he'll say something dumb. He'll he'll just say how great a rampage we got and, coming and, up on Friday. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and look, uh, you know what though? Something I forgot to mention. I know I was like pretty blitzed at Collision <laughs> on uh, Saturday. I don't think this aired on TV, but because they were taping Rampage right after Collision mm -hmm. on Saturday, he came out in between as they were changing the ring skirts, and he yeah. goes, "Hey, uh, does anyone out there feel like we're living in the movie Time Cop?" He did that. He and I was like, sorry, what did this guy just say? And like, you know, I love me some Jean-Claude Van Damme. So I was like, wait, are we in Time Cop? Right now? <laughs> but I was he so did confused. the same thing yeah. at Dino. He Probably when you're taping two things at once. Yeah. It's like, well, oh, get man. you material. Yeah. Time Cop. Not time my favorite. Cop. But still. Oh. Uh, so there was other stuff going on this week, too. I know that's... Uh, just want to go to a couple of uh, Super Chats nice. while we're on the subject. Uh, from Jake, who says, Sup, BD. Welcome, Steph. What do you think is the wise thing for Hangman or Perry to do? Should they respond at least or not at all? No. Um, Hangman shouldn't because Hangman's kind of shown himself even though he did this stuff on camera, but like to be like quite a classy, quiet guy. Yeah. He's taken the high ground, media. hasn't he? Um, and he seems like a real, like good guy who this whole thing that he did with punk was just a really dumb, like defend your, I don't know why you would take up for Colt Cabana the heart, but whatever. But he seems like such a great guy that mm. he's not going to do that. If I was Jack Perry, I would not say anything. Cause Jack will just put his foot in it. Cause he's immature. Like we've said, Jack's, but he probably will say something. Uh, like I saw the new Jack Perry house of torture t-shirt oh. that says in like metal band writing Crimea river. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> gonna have to Jack me one shouldn't of say, but yeah. he will. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm just waiting for Jack Perry to get his release and take up the role of Lexus King in NXT. Go That's all I go. want. Just money to just be made. Just play the cha change the cat. Sin color <laughs> it, you know? Money to be made. Or or Punk will go up to him in NXT and be like, Jack, uh, I'd like to have a word with you. And he goes, no, 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 I'm not talking to you without my lawyer present. Mm. Uh, in regards to the uh, like guaranteed uh, money, RL says, <laughs> I get the hunger part, but to be honest, older wrestlers posting up GoFundMes after giving 300 plus days of their body for years. Yeah. Ask him to say that at the next Cauliflower Alley. No, like I, I, I've been a little kid being like hey doesn't that like hurt these guys and then i'm an adult and i see that wrestlers who didn't get these you know these big paychecks like paul Heyman's going into the hall of fame and at the same time there's an yeah. ecw tribute show at the ecw arena going on and i guarantee most of the guys in that arena are going to be watching it backstage but being like 
fucker still owes me 60 bucks. So like, it's, you know, you want to see these wrestlers be able to buy their mom's houses. And, yeah. you know, yeah. these are entertainers and look what they go through. I can't get out of bed without hurting. And these guys are doing insane things that I couldn't even like dream up in my head with. So they deserve to be paid fairly. It's entertainment actors, you know, all these people in the spotlight, they're, they're, they're stars. Like this is what these people do. These people and wrestlers, they put their bodies through all this. They should like this is this is great for wrestling that Tony Khan is like just some rich nerd yeah. who's like ah let me let me pay these people out like it's good that way. I think it's like sometimes when you're on a tirade about something and you think you're on a roll and you keep going. And I think he was like you know A W it's like bad business like they're not making money blah blah. blah. And then he got to the point of like and guaranteed contracts are bad and probably in his head like oh no like, wait oh, I like those that's, yeah that's wait, not those are the good right yeah yeah point. <laughs> I came in had one match got injured and I'm fucking being yeah. paid so yeah. Yeah. Very, very interesting. And I'm sure there'll be more, st- you know, he's doing all these panels. He's probably doing interviews and stuff this weekend. Who knows what else yeah. comes if he's, if he's opening the book that much, like who knows of the book of you do get, You did get the feeling with this interview though, very similarly to the original, like Cabana one. It's yeah. because he has a friendship with Ariel. Um, yeah. So let's hope no one sues. The eh? thing with <laughs> Ariel, like, um, you know, I, I really, Ariel was like like one of the reasons I started doing what what I did, uh, what I do. Um, and his recent behavior has turned me off him completely. Um, and his whole beef with Tony Khan, Tony was in the wrong too. Ariel was very much in the wrong. Ariel is very much bought by WWE, no matter what he says. But he did a great interview here. But it was very funny how Punk was saying, like, oh, a lot of the wrestling media isn't real journalists. I 100%, as a qualified journalist, I 100% <laughs> agree with that. I back him 100% on that. But, and I know that Ariel is a real journalist. He it's called him. It's so one. funny that he's like, you're a real journalist, Ariel. Five minutes later, we have a <laughs> shot an angle. <laughs> angle on Ariel's show. I, I would too. not ever let an angle happen yeah. on a show. And that actually, I saw, um, who was it made this point? I think it was um, Michael Sidgwick that I'm stealing this point from. That was all the wrong way around. That Becky Rhea stuff right. should have been on like before the punk stuff because we went from like the most serious and to like this absolute like kids bullshit. Yeah, happening. with like what like six huge dudes who can't yeah. pull across to yeah, Becky, much l- smaller I mean, women. Come on. Yeah, it was a but little it's just hokey. So funny. It's like, yeah, real Ariel, journalism. You're the only real journalist. I thought it was like, a great interview, but that on, did that chuckled me a oh, lot. Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. did get my guess. Yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, real journalists don't do shit that Ariel does sometimes. Uh, shout out real journalists like yourself, Steph, but <laughs> shout out John Pollock because if you're not following Post Wrestling this yes. week, you absolutely should. I know there is a big episode of Pollock and Thurston. Yeah, they week. have uh, Ann Callis on yes, Chanel. Yes, exactly. So uh, please check out Post Wrestling and all the feeds. I think Pollock going- is the realist journalist. The GOAT. He's the, he's the man. The and goat. when I said that... Um, I'm not like I was started doing this because of Ariel. It was because of Ariel's interview with with John Pollock, where they talked about how they got into it and how they started. So John is uh, the absolute absolutely, realist. and I know he's blushing if he's listening to this somehow, <laughs> sometime, some way. I know he's got a busy week. Uh, we have busy time. I know we've spent so much time already with you, Steph. But it is WrestleMania week. Let's, yeah. let's talk about some more positive stuff. Okay. Are you hyped about WrestleMania? Yeah. I am. I'm really excited for this year's WrestleMania. Probably the most I've been since like the Daniel Bryan one. Okay. Ten years ago. Uh, yeah, me yeah. too. I, I said that earlier. I'm like, it's been like, like 10 this years. This shit has been so good with The Rock. Uh, there was obviously like teething problems when he came in and they like sorted it all out. But, and there's, you know, holes and problems within the storyline. But like the past couple of weeks, especially, like The Rock has brought it on Raw. He's left me feeling like a kid going, what's going to happen next week? And I think that those two matches alone are enough to make like a really exciting mania. But I'm hyped for like most of the rest of the card too. So I actually have no no complaints about yeah. WWE main roster right now. Yeah, like for the first time in a long time, it feels like the, the things are proper. NXT oh, yeah. doesn't have the most hype anymore, but the main roster is the this main. This truly feels like Vince is gone. This, yeah, this yeah. mania. I think the now that now we know what's night one, night two. I think yeah. the the two nights look really well balanced. There's stuff mm-hmm. I'm interested in in both nights, and even the match I'd say I'm least interested to, which I really haven't enjoyed the feud at all, which is. Lashley and the Street Profits versus the final 
Testament. Who? You then tell me it's a Philadelphia street fight, and I'm like, you know what? That could be it's quite Karrion fun. It's Carrion Cross. It's oh, you're you're like the only person I know who's a Carrion Cross fan. I love Karrion Cross. Is this gonna be the uh what the the Super Legion Hill. of Doom Ahmed Johnson street <laughs> fight we had uh what after the austin brett match wasn't it like right right we need i feel to... like it could be something like that just like and that that's the match i have least interested in. well, and i'm like now you know what even that could okay be well fun. like while you're on it like yeah if it's wrestlemania bring back you know raven's golf cart bring back the candy jars oh, i want yeah. all the hardcore blunt plunder for this match hardcore holly wins it regardless somehow right? did, <laughs> does she have a shoulder tat now bring him in yeah, yeah exactly uh, yeah, I saw that that was added. And I liked how they they kind of told you which night. I'm sure it helps for people who are like, well, I can only afford one night and I only want to see a specific match. Now you know, so you can kind of pick, which I assume this might make things a bit more difficult for people because I think they've evenly spread it. Like you mm. said, yeah. like there's there's some really good stuff on, on each show. So uh, should we kind of go through go some through things here? Let's go through Rhea. They, they announced Rhea and Becky are opening night one. Yeah, Becky was pushing for that. Okay. So, because she said she's not on last. So, she's not opening. If you're not closing, you're opening. Exactly. Rhea Ripley putting her title on the line against Becky, which uh, I've been liking this. I mean, Rhea Ripley, huge star. Becky, huge star. Been loving some of the stuff they did, especially it was last week where they had a bit of a promo battle. But I think Becky should should beat Rhea for this long reign that she's had. Yeah, I I think so too. I, I think this isn't the first match we're going to see between them. I don't actually necessarily want to see them like doing rematch after rematch right after. I think it's a big enough match you could spread out again. And Rhea's had this incredible sort of like first couple of years on the main roster and this just rise that it's maybe more interesting for Rhea to taste a bit of a, a defeat and have Becky still while she's at the top of the game be the champ again and have that run. Uh, we've not seen Becky as a champion, as a baby face since like pre pandemic now. So it has been quite a while. Um, but yeah, I, I'd go for that. And then I think you could build for a Rhea Bianca thing for like next year's mania or sure, something. Yeah. But yeah, I'm leaning more for Becky for this. I'm leaning on Rhea. <laughs> yeah. Rhea, um, yeah. I, I think the fans are going to reject Becky winning and that's going to be awkward um but yeah i think ria has been so strong i haven't really enjoyed the build of this feud very much it's a match i'm very much excited for yeah. um because i like ria so much and becky but i think the feud's not been that well built becky's especially the recent like oh you mentioned my daughter like craziness from back like i hate stuff like that i'm like Okay, but yeah, I would just I would keep it on Rhea honestly because Becky, you know, she had a great last year where she proved herself like away from the spotlight. But I still think it's Rhea's time, and I think the fans are gonna be behind. She's Rhea. such a big star right now, she's yeah. Like, huge. but I just don't know. Like, she's who, who like when, she's just gonna hold this for like two years if yeah. that's the case. Mm. Like, yeah. I feel like her run hasn't necessarily been that great though. Maybe they could switch recently. it when they switch the dynamic like when when Rhea does the baby face thing which yeah is probably gonna be dumping dominic right get becky into heel yeah and then that would be like yeah, switch yeah. It at like a summer or summer it's kind of been that way for, for Rhea before where it's like oh wait she's supposed to be people want to cheer yeah it's like she's, she's against charlotte last yeah. year she oh, was yeah. but, but either way the match would be great yeah i, I really sure. i do think that uh okay what else on night one the the six pack tag team ladder match which is now for both sets of titles they Definitely knew what they were doing by now announcing that one team wins one and the next team wins the other. So there are two winners in this match. Oh, they are splitting that. Okay. Yeah, it's so like, or or they can just grab both at the same yeah. time, but that's a lot of hardware to grab at once. But uh, so who do we have? Judgment Day, Finn and Priest versus DIY versus Awesome Truth versus New Day versus A Town Down Under. Great, <laughs> great name versus New Catch Republic. And do you think Big E comes out and? Throws another team in there as well. Fuck it. The Dudley boys are entering the like oh, the like the other, the Hardys thing. No, I don't think <laughs> yeah. any more teams can be added in this already stacked match, which I'm sure will have some crazy spots in it. I think this is time to take it off Judgment Day. It's it's an easy way with it being a ladder match. Um, I think we are starting to see kind of the the crumbling of the Judgment Day. You mentioned Rhea potentially dumping Dom. Um we 
Damian Priest still has that briefcase, so we need to maybe start focusing on him as a singles guy and as a baby face, maybe. He's I think. like kayfabe wise, he has had so many opportunities to be champion. Yeah. And like know, Seth so has been stupid. like messed up every week. And yeah. it's like, oh, wait. So I would see uh, Awesome Truth taking one set of belts. Okay. Uh, just, yeah. you know, feel yeah. good, fun. They don't have to hold it long. Um, as the other team, like, Maybe, like, do you go with, maybe, D- like, the the fan in me wants to see DIY win it. You I know? love DIY. But, but I like... don't know if they've been really built enough for that to be justified. So I see it more likely being a heel team, in which case it would be, unfortunately, Theory and Waller. Yeah, I, if you're you know, if look, you're having two winners, here. I love I love DIY. I love me some Johnny. I love me some Champa. NXT for life. But I feel like they're gonna come out to like crickets at this stadium. I feel like they've not been really clicking on this main roster run. And I, I'm really happy that they're finally in a WrestleMania. Cause that's always something. Uh, there's a few names on this pay-per-view both nights that finally certain people are on mania. And again, as some, I'm like always great to finally see them make it. Cause that is a lot of, you know, these guys and girls dreams to, to make it there, but uh, I don't see DIY winning and I'm shockingly would pick the heels because it's just more like interesting that way i am disappointed we don't have the creeds and lwo in this i think that yeah, would make it yeah. a bit more of a fun match it'll be very like, chaotic so you're but... you're picking waller and theory as well I, I guess that sounds wild F- fuck it new day like give them something to do <laughs> i don't even i don't know yeah uh steph oh god i honestly couldn't care less yeah. about this like right. the tag this is not how great. i feel about <laughs> the match that you couldn't care about yeah i, yeah. I couldn't care less anyone but tyler bait <laughs> um anyone but tyler Bant. there you go she also <laughs> picks uh austin theory and grayson Walker. right <laughs> clean sweep uh what about the battle of the brothers jimmy versus jay uso uh the the fan in me the hip-hop head they had lil wayne on raw which is mm-hmm. really weird and they've announced that he's gonna perform at wrestlemania so my whole life living in canada uh, he's never been allowed into this country. So now I'm wow. going to the they States. Let me in, but not yeah, like yeah. So now I get to see WrestleMania, Meek Mill, possibly downstate, and Lil Post Wayne it. all in a weekend. I'm, I'm I really thought it excited. was the fiend for a sec. You honestly. thought Lil yeah, Wayne was the was fiend with the like, dreads? Yeah, I just saw these dreads and Jay Uso was like, scared. hey, Uso. I was like, <laughs> he looked very, very happy, very chill. Uh, love me some some Wayne. Um, but yeah, he's going to be performing. I assume he plays a song and then out comes Jay Uso for the like the entrance there, but yeah, which brother is winning this and why does it end with Rikishi in the middle oh doing the dance God. with both of them? Um, I think Jimmy wins just to like, Jimmy needs it more. Yeah. Jimmy's being beaten like a drum. And then by the time we get to the bloodline match, the Usos are back together on the side of, uh, I think so. Yeah. I, side of yeah. I, really? I, I, okay. I assume, I assume it's bloodline rules and he oh, shows up for yeah. a turn in that match for sure. Yeah. That match is going to have like six different turns in it. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. assuming, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's, Jimmy, it's whether you want this to continue, I could, I could kind of see the sort of Jericho, Shawn Michaels finish with Jay winning and then mm. being like, Hey, you're my brother. Like, Come on, and then turn and it then up. hug in, and then a bit of a low oh, blow or something. So no, turn it up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't cool. know. But I, I, it is doing this match where it is. You do kind of need the odds stacked against uh, Cody for night yeah. two, so you do need to keep Jimmy heel, and therefore maybe a Jay Jay turn. Although Jay's been yeah. so hot and popular that I wonder if that's the best idea. Yeah, but, but it's, yeah, I I would lean Jimmy. I think I think he does need it more. No yeet. Then uh, it's cool because I, I mentioned before they did Bretton Owen at ten. Hardy's versus Hardy's at 25, and then 15 years later, now mm-hmm. 40, the brother beat brother. So that's pretty cool. cool. What about Gunther putting his IC title on the line against Sammy Balboa here Gunther. in Philly? This could be the match of the weekend. Yeah, right I think here. it will be. This I is going to be slap. He hated that raw video, though. You know, weird. you know me. I'm totally humorless um, when it comes to wrestling. That video was awful so badly like produced so cheesy you're talking about like the the, hike, the, the workout yeah. video training um, also it should have been like over weeks or something yeah. not 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 seen it every week but like a film rather than like in one day this happens um that was utter dog shit until then gunther dragged out chad gable during that match and like yeah. that was like that is real okay like that 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 was the difference between like like an like 
actual Godfather in like a parody or something, you know? Um, no, the real Godfather was when we made you watch NXT oh, tonight true. with Tony D'Angelo. <laughs> but I think Gunther's winning. Yeah. I, I think yeah. So. I, I know. Like, it's crazy. Sammy, like, also Canadian, we got to support. But yeah. the story is way more interesting if Gunther beats yeah. him and then yeah. Gable's the one to take it. Sorry, yeah. Sammy. You had your moment last year. You'll get the big title one day. But I wouldn't even have Gable take it. I like Eventually. Gunther has to have it in berlin unless he wins like the world title in berlin or yeah something. yeah or yeah we do Drag title for title dragonov versus mm. gunther in berlin would be amazing that'd too. be cool very jealous of anyone going to that show yeah i i love sammy Zayn, but i do want to see gunther continue this yeah. and i think at this point it, it should be gable who is the one who eventually takes it i i'm with you as well i love the idea of the training videos i hate music in videos yeah. in wrestling unless it's like a promo package someone like dubbed having, it with eye of the tiger having this like <laughs> underscore just makes it, it takes so it out of me out of it and i think both have been really believable characters in their like little backstage segments in yeah. gable and uh sammy uh, i'm still maybe saying right. gable wins it on raw okay yeah mania. raw after mania mm -hmm. and then gunther goes into main like title territory yeah. I, cody versus gunther at the bash would be gunther Berlin. Good does a um who did it oh fucking like Samoa Joe where he's just like I don't want this title anymore I'm going to have yeah, main title. Right. that's what Gunther should do but I think it'll be a a, a banger of a match so yeah, looking forward sure. to that uh Bianca Jade and Naomi teaming up to take on damage control Dakota uh D sorry Dakota Kai Asuka and Kyrie Saint I mean it's got to be Jade yeah. winning this Jade we're gonna yeah. see some Jaded here on, on I think that's a smart way to bring her in like kind of with all the different yeah. people involved and if anyone can like carry her uh it's gonna be oscar yeah Bianca. we'll see uh, yeah for she's sure. with some really good people yeah exactly yeah. she'll have a crazy entrance will look great yeah uh i did like her pop-up powerbomb i thought that looked very nice on smackdown I, you know i'll miss her her aw music though the guitar solo it was pretty it's nice. very similar yeah, though, it, it is very similar so we're going with jade obviously yeah. winning that one uh, the tag team match, which is what Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee versus Santos and Dom. They really just put the this, together. Uh, this one's like shit. I'd rather yeah. see another Rey Dom singles match than this, to be honest, because it just felt like it's so random. Um, I think the Lucha guys will get their get their spots in though. I feel yeah. like there'll be some some fun stuff. But I think it'd be good. I, yeah. But like as far as like for this for the storyline, um it just seemed like really like muddled because now it's been like what two years that Ray and Dom have been on separate shows and still hitting each other. Yeah. So it was like oh long term storytelling. Dom, Dom makes his annual trip over to yeah. fuck up his dad before Mania. <laughs> I think you'll you'll have you know the LWO with their whole group of guys and then yeah. the other guys it'll it'll be a whole lucha I was actually, if you weren't doing just the singles, Ray and Santos, I kind of just wanted the 10 man. Yeah, or just I would have liked the 10 all man lucha yeah. match because I do yeah. think, like, I, I think Joaquin and uh, Raul, sorry, Cruz del Toro have yeah. been absolutely killing it mm -hmm. recently yeah. and they really deserve a spot this weekend. Like, and, they'll, yeah, they'll be in the entrances so, and ringside, but they should have been wrestling. And it does just feel, ah, we Dom's too big a character not to give a match where. Oh, I guess with Ray again, let's slot yeah. him in. It felt very kind of shoehorned in. Yeah. Whereas the whole LWO LDF story has built quite nicely up till now. So last year. And I thought Dragon Lee was already in the LWO. And Ray's Me just too. like the newest member of the LWO. Carlito's like, like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted my Mania payday. So I get paid just to be there. But. Yeah. but maybe like Ray won last year. Do we go for Santos and Dom this time? Yeah, I think Santos gets the win here because the story has been him and Rey Mysterio and the new era of luchadors and, and all that stuff. So again, I, I was expecting a big Lucha, like five on five match, but I think we'll be surprised by some of the stuff in the match. Cause Santos and dragon Lee will want to show. Up, oh so. yeah. Yeah. But then we go to the last match on night one, another tag team match billed as the biggest tag team match in the history of wrestling since mm -hmm. WrestleMania one, we go to the bloodline, meaning Roman Reigns, and The Rock taking on Cody Rhodes and Seth freaking Rollins. And if Rhodes and Rollins win, then the bloodline is barred night two. But if they lose, then it is bloodline rules, which we're not really quite sure means. But 
I assume the Usos come out. That's Anything Solo. Goes. Uh, Anything goes. The Rock's mom, uh, Cody's mom, everyone Brandy. just, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately for this, I didn't. We didn't get the Brandy versus the Rock promo battle that I was so hoping for. But Wait, you call Black yourself Adam? Black Adam? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm a, a Black, Black bitch. bitch. <laughs> exactly. It's, it was really just waiting to to go there, but uh, unfortunately, uh, maybe next time. But I have been like so in love with this whole storyline. Like you said it. Like when they brought in the Rock, I was like, yeah. could give a fuck. Don't really care. Yeah. Then it was like flipped. And as soon as he was like the rock yeah. from like when I loved yeah. the rock. Once you realize he was in it. Yeah. 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 And he was. You saw him really, selling on Raw last night. He was yeah. flopping and doing everything. I'm like, hey, maybe this match would be pretty I, good. I think the big problem with Dwayne as a, as a person, as a movie star, as everything, um, is he became someone that just like wouldn't take a risk because he's just has this actually very bland image of Dwayne. Like he does all these. He always wears the safari shirts. Yeah. Yeah. But he's always selling you something. And because he's always selling you something, he has to be like a neutral person. Like he has to always be like, yeah, just like this great guy, Dwayne, maybe I'll be present or maybe I'll just host the Oscars. Who knows? But I'm like, I'll never offend you. And like when he got into WWE, like he got in it, like, He's taking risks here that he hasn't taken in the movies since yeah. I don't know what Pain and Gain or something. Yeah, like, like I, I'm not a fan of his crazy. movies. Um, that so him being in it has I think pulled all of us in it because yeah, originally when he turned up, it's like what you're on the board and now you're gonna take Cody's WrestleMania. What like what the fuck? And then once this storyline developed and how he's been just acting every week and like he's doing the Instagram promos and you can see now that he doesn't care what the outside thinks. And I think that's what makes it so great. Like that everyone that knows him. He's not worried star, about people laughing because it's wrestling yeah. anymore. He's already made. Or like whereas, not getting it yeah. or whatever. He's just been, he's, he's been great. You, you've said it. Like he went from neutral to then go smoke some more crack, which he's is like one reading, of the greatest lines I've ever heard in wrestling. videos of little girls crying on TV. Yeah, I yeah. mean, like great. I caused that. Like the Dwayne Johnson that wants you to think of him as like a future present and then he also wants you to buy his tequila or whatever it is um he doesn't want you to see him like that but now he's like yes i made those little girls cry um because i had to and i want to make this man's mother cry and yeah i'm gonna whip him he's been um, great the wild. like I've, i'm just so <laughs> shocked that i've been so like so inter- invested Damn. back into it and he's caused that like he's got the the aura down the fact that he's been wearing those damn shirts turned uh, into vests. He bought back the cow skin oh, vest. It's the which same is one. one of the classic. The same one. He's, yeah. It's legit like the, the identical <laughs> one. He must have had it in his like closet all these years. But wow, like the way he looks and presented, he looks like this evil. How villain. does that still fit him? That would yeah, be like maybe it's, it's that would be like but, me wearing clothes from when I was six. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just it's it's been a really good. He's like, been great. I love how every week his entrance grows a little bit yeah. more. He's adding something. Different difference yeah. like the mania ma- uh entrance is gonna be yeah crazy. who knows what this mania entrance is again he's flying in on a helicopter <laughs> or a jet or something for for this one but been loving this one but how does it how does it play out here like clearly it's the- got to be rock pins cody yeah i think because you need all the odds stacked against cody for night two exactly uh if the rock is down for more matches which it seems like maybe he is having that winner get over potentially the new champion it gives that match down the line. It gives something else for Cody to like strive for at a later pay per view. So I, I think as much as I was Seth pins Rock, I think the way well, you've changed now. Yeah, this guy was the only guy on the planet Earth saying Seth was going to pin the Rock. Seth, <laughs> it still happened. Uh, people who put money down on wrestling, like Seth what is the over under on Seth that? Seth ain't one? eating the pin though. It's Seth, you Cody. think it's Cody getting pinned? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think I think Seth eating the pin like completely shits even more on that title and that match with drew the next night I know, but whereas i think cody so getting pinned by the rock i don't know you take that picture with the rock roman reigns on one side and seth and cody on the other we go to a hundred different strangers and say who of these people do you know i think 100 of those people will say the rock and is that i don't know who that is, is that the aquaman guy and they wouldn't know who Seth Rollins is, let alone Cody Rhodes. Like, I feel like 
it would be great if The Rock pins Cody because then, yes, we go into night two where we go into this bloodline rules where you have your solo Sokoa, you have a Jimmy slash Jay like return reunion swerve yeah. there and Cody still kicks out. Then you have, fuck, maybe Seth's mad. He lost his title earlier. He comes out, turns on Cody too. Cody still kicks out. Then you got The Rock comes out and finally maybe helps Cody win from Roman Reigns. I don't know. That's a lot of overbooking, but mm-hmm. you're saying that because of that segment with the truck with Cena and Stone Cold, that fuck oh, it. Maybe? Cena no, this, and Stone this, Cold. This is night two. night two. Night two. Night two. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. This is bloodline uh, rules. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I can All actually, these people. I can be convinced that now that The Rock would pin Cody, but I think that I would like that actually because I think when this is all over, um, I would like to see the bloodline implode properly right. with The Rock in it. So if Rock can pin Cody and then Cody pins Roman the next night, the Rock has that over uh, Roman yeah. as much as Saudi he has Mania. it over Cody. Mm. You know? Then the Rock faces Gunther at Bash in Berlin oh, yeah. Let's <laughs> for do the it. title. Let's do it. But, but yeah, like this, this sounds pretty crazy. So they like that sets up the night two. I mean, night two, we can go into it. The Rock versus Cody Rhodes. I'm sorry, the Rock. That's the match we all want. The Rock versus Cody Rhodes <laughs> after last week, at least. Roman Reigns in the Rock, like I'm still not saying the match right. Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. What what actually happens there? Let's while we're on that subject, still. I do think Cody finishes the story. Finish the year. story. I think it's the time to do it. As as Steph just said, it it opens up way more. The implosion of the bloodline. Yeah. Uh, you, it can set up Roman v Rock. It can set uh cody versus rome sorry cody versus rock (laughs) um but i think this is gonna we're gonna end up seeing almost like a anarchy in the arena kind of thing (laughs) with this like i think it's gonna be so many bells and whistles sting triple h that kind of thing yeah and i'm gonna (laughs) fucking love it like it's gonna be so overbooked but it's gonna be so much fun and i do see this the spot with austin Cena coming out to help help Cody. It's crazy, they have man. history with The Rock. They have history with Roman. And having the 40th anniversary, Austin hitting one more stunner on The Rock. See if The Rock can do that backflip. How many cases of beer is he giving Austin at the end? Oh my god! And beer bath with Cody and Austin with the with the title. Wow! I think a boy can dream. Austin said like Dusty was one of his favorite wrestlers and like Dusty got him into wrestling. I, I think it can all come together quite nice. Look, I imagine Cena and Austin have a bit of a like promo to start WrestleMania, but I don't necessarily see them being interfered in that. A lot of well, this especially, especially now. that this week's Raw had your baby faces. Oh, we've got the plan this week. We're going to have the upper hand. And they still got they up. still didn't win. They yeah. need to call in more of the Avengers. Avengers. Exactly. Yeah. I can see uh Austin doing it more than Cena. Yeah. yeah. Because Cena's must have one hell Cena of just loves people. Fuck right? it, just don't call. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Cena would come and help, okay. but fuck it. Yeah. Like and more and more you come say, out yeah. and just choke Sam Bron Breaker for reasons. Yeah, like yeah, it's... who knows? We'll just we'll just have it. But yeah, finish the story. He's yeah, gonna please. finish the story. Please and finish the, the story. The match is gonna be crazy. And yes. I think he should finish the story. And actually, as much as I want to see The Rock and Cody, maybe we could do that like next year's WrestleMania. But I think he needs a breather from the bloodline and yeah. they can stay and do their own thing. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. I'd like to see yeah. him take on other people as champion, like Gunther would yeah. be awesome. I have CM Punk eventually. <laughs> I have loved as well. We were talking about The Rock with all the callbacks, but the callbacks with the weightlifting belt, because that was such yeah. a thing in Rock v. Hogan, wasn't right, it? It was right. the yeah. whipping. And I thought that beat down on Monday, like, yeah, Cody just loves being whipped, doesn't he? Just, you know it. it. You know it was him that really said, "Hey, let's like do this." Punk whipped. likes choking. Cody likes whips. <laughs> yeah. Wrestlers yeah. are just like mm. us. <laughs> For sure. Uh, night two, continuing on here, we got Seth freaking Rollins putting his title on the line against Drew McIntyre. I've really been loving Drew McIntyre's He's the heel run here, being the player hater of the year. I really hope this match steps up. Like, I really hope they deliver. Can I get my prediction? Hell yeah. Um, Drew wins and then Priest cashes in and immediately takes it off him. So Drew gets like more Love it. bitter and angry. And, and then beats the shit out of him at the next like, The way this character originally started, it was all him 
kind of pointed out things that were like actually you know true mm. and he was just getting more and more like angry and frustrated and then the stuff he's been doing with punk like i love that so much i love when people really take the piss out of guys that i like like <laughs> that like you know like that's how um i met benno because he was taking the piss out of jay white you know so what drew is doing to cm punk is right up my alley and i love that so much but i think yeah um, if Drew won and then Priest immediately took it off him, imagine pretty that. Funny. that would be so yeah. funny. You think and we're going to have Punk on commentaries. So. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I could see that. And yeah. then you can wait until Glasgow for Drew to mm -hmm. actually win and right. be okay. champion, maybe. Yeah. Uh, LA Knight versus AJ Styles. These guys just really hate each other. For sure. They just they, they can't figure out who's the better looking superstar of WWE SmackDown. So is this a this is still just a singles match? No Philly Street fight here because that's also been added on that mm. night. So it's just a one on one. But uh, LA Knight beats AJ. I think that's yeah. Clear. Don't really care about. Yeah. I don't really care. Yeah, about this, th match. this this has doesn't really have my. I I like both guys, but just yeah. something just not clicking with night me. on the card. Just really yeah. AJ. He's had hair. like um you know he's had a wild ride. And it's definitely curled off a lot, mm. but you had to have him on the yeah. card. Yeah, I'm happy that he's not just on the wayside. Yeah. He's at least in a match. AJ, he's kind of like their like right hand man. Essentially. Yeah. yeah, he's kind of just happy the doing that. Course. So yeah, exactly. We have, sorry, the pride, Bobby Lashley, Dawkins, and Ford taking on the final testament. I feel like I've maybe not watched a lot of SmackDown <laughs> lately. Uh, I don't, I didn't know that they were using these names. So the final testament is Karrion Cross, Akam Razor, Scarlet, and Paul yeah. Elroy. Now yeah. I realize why I don't know that. Yeah. I, I love me some. I Paul think the Elroy. pride wins. I just want to see some like plunder, like plunder. You said. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Paul Ellering through a table, oh, flaming. Yeah. Love to I see. I think it. the final testament win. You um, fire table, yeah, fire table at Mania. Final testament. Final she testament. Wins. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. The final I, I, chapter. Yeah, Cross did a great promo on Twitter. Um, I love it. Little then uh, EO Sky putting the title on the line against Bailey, the former leader of Damage Control. Uh, this is all a, a long story here, kind of yeah. similar, like Batista Triple H evolution. Maybe not executed as great as we kind of maybe thought, but at the end of the tunnel is what should be an awesome match. So I think, at least for myself, I've kind of just like, well, I know we're getting this match. Let's just get to the match, and it'll be awesome to see uh EO at WrestleMania. Yeah. I think it's been a like a a criticism with the women's builds in general, and not just this mania, but previous manias. I'm thinking like uh, Bianca and Sasha back in the day, even like Rhea and Charlotte last year. You know the match is going to deliver. Like they're so talented, but there's just been something missing in the build, and the story should have really written itself. But I don't think it's been quite there in execution. Um, but like massive eo fan it's really cool seeing bailey like actually get a like this highlight because i i think she deserves it like she's, she's kind of been the the fourth of the four horsewomen for such a long time and i think the match will deliver um just i wish the story was like i don't know i feel like i should be more excited about this one um but i i do see bailey winning yes to to spoil my own scoops, I did speak to Bailey last week, and I'm putting it out um, this week, so I should have one out tomorrow. Excellent. Um, she definitely isn't like fully happy with it. She mm. def like definitely had other things that she wanted to do, and wasn't really happy with the piercing. Is like what I got from the stuff that she said. But um, Bailey 100% like deserves like her flowers, her moment. Like to me, she's the best of the four horsewomen and like the least recognized. So I think that I th hope she's going to win. And like, and they'll hug it out after. No, <laughs> uh, I, I, I love me some EO sky. Mm -hmm. She gets me high and I I'm really excited to see her at, at a WrestleMania and as champion. And like, I, again, this, the, the run itself here hasn't been that great, but I think the entrance, the match, the moment will be pretty spectacular. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping good stuff from this match. And then we already talked about the main event, so I'll go to the last match on this show. Logan Paul versus Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens and throw in KSI in there, I'm sure, or Jake Paul or something. I feel this is where we're getting the uh, the Kelsey brother 
interference as well. Kelsey. Oh, I, yeah. Oh, right. Uh, Jason? Jason Kelsey. Yeah. That's right. I, I think he's going to have the front row spot and just punch Logan in the face or right, something right, like right, that. Right, like, right. I don't know how else he'd be involved. What other place? So he's orig- he's he's originally a f- he, uh, an eagle, right? But yeah. then he obviously he's been a chief. No, that's Sorry. Travis. Oh, see, I'm already, that shows it, my sports. He, he's retired, right? He's yeah, retired. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just know him from the memes. Um, right, shirtless memes from him. He's great. Um, Logan retains. I don't yeah. know. Like, who, I do, think so, who does this serve? We yeah. don't need a Randy U.S. No. title run. We don't need a Kevin Owens no. U.S. This title run. Felt like there should have been a solo match. I th- probably like a Logan Kevin rematch or something. But where else could they fit in Randy? Yeah. And yeah, or I think I actually would have just liked Logan and L.A. Knight. Um, yeah, they did pivot that, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. but then if you did Randy, AJ, um, and Kevin in a three-way, like two of those men are just too old to be in a three-way. Uh, so, <laughs> There's a joke there somewhere. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like this doesn't feel like this is the match we should be getting with Logan Paul, but yeah. it's the match we're getting. Yeah, it, it'll be. I, I see him retain. It'll be good, though. Yeah. yeah, it'll be fun, I'm sure. Get a crazy RKO on the Prime bottle, reveal it's what KSI the again the buckshot into the RKO, something like yeah, that. Yeah, some something crazy there. Oh yeah, we're gonna have the Prime logo all over this mania as well. Oh, forgot about oh. that. Yeah. Oh wow, is that legit? on the Prime that logo. Sucks. Mm. Damn. Cool. Well, there you go. There's uh, there's the whole WrestleMania card for. for and that was nights. NXT. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, we spent like two hours not oh talking my God. about NXT. I just so. like I invaded and ruined your show. No, no, it's it's Mania stand season. and deliver season, people. <laughs> and uh, no, we. I'm glad we had this this chat. We are we are all going away. We're not really gonna have the chance to preview stuff. So yeah, yeah. We knew it would go long tonight, and. Uh, it's perfect. We'll try and remember to put a timestamp in it for, <laughs> for those sure. diehard NXT Someone's fans who are like, oh, I want to know what happened to Joe Gacy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, well, we could we could call it there for for now. Uh, we're gonna jump into NXT. Could we could we take a quick like pause? Or yeah. Something? Should we take a little? I need to fill up my Sasha Banks water cup. Oh no, this is my SummerSlam water. I need well, I'm water. leaving. So yes. thank you guys for having me. Anyone listening on the stream, we will just take like three minutes and then three, we'll talk about minutes, NXT yeah, and we'll be back. Yeah. All right. But thank you, Steph. Uh, any Hi. anything else yeah, for you want to plug? Please. Um, catch me tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern on Fightful with Rich Fan. Um, and yeah, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Stephanie Cheers Wrestling. Okay. Excellent. Steph, thank you so much for joining thank us. You guys. And, thank uh, you guys. Happy to have you in Toronto for the next little bit. Yeah. Thank you. So we'll be right back. See you in a sec. Bye.
Hello. Hello, hello, hello. We're back. Hello. We're back. It's Tuesday. Yes, we rambled on about WrestleMania and everything. And oh boy, we could still talk about more. Great space. ramble, I thought. Great yes, chat we yes. had. Thank you very much, Steph, for the joining us. Uh, we, yeah, we love that chat. And the, the chat room seemed to enjoy it as well, I think. Uh, yes, lots absolutely. of activity going on there. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for staying up late. Uh, this Tuesday as we're talking all about WrestleMania season, CM Punk, and now we're on to the main event. NXT! NXT. That's right. NXT from Tuesday, April the 2nd, 2024. It is the go-home show for Stand and Deliver this weekend. As we mentioned, we will be there live. We will somehow record a show Sunday morning and talking about that night one, but at Poison Rana Pod for all the stuff. Give us a follow. PoisonRana.ca for the links of everything we do. But we are here. Someone in the chat even says Rexdale in the building. So I definitely appreciate that. Rexdale. Shout out Rexdale. Rexdale, Ontario. Oh. Just, just down the road. Nice. Hello, Rexdale. Yeah, should should we go? Uh, are we going to have a collision there one day? Uh, no, it's not. like It's just like a suburb of like a Tobacco kind of. Oh, okay. North York, Sounds Toronto. fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we are going to be in Philly this weekend, and so will WWE and NXT. And we're here with the kickoff for that show, the go-home show, I should say. I'm sure there's a kickoff. There will be, and a match announced. But we're talking about NXT from tonight. And it kicked off with the triple threat tag team match. And the winner goes on to face the Wolf Dogs at Stand and Deliver. The Wolf Dogs may not have been on TV a whole lot tonight, but... We, we miss them tonight, I think. But they have shirts now. They do? They're a little late. We, we gave them... These we, are going to be white 2 aj shirts, aren't they? I mean, They're, yeah. they're going to be nothing in a week's time. No, don't split them up now. Come on. Yeah, rip the Wolf Dogs, maybe, possibly. Well, uh, the Wolf Dogs got merch, but the, the guys in this match, it's Frazier and Axiom taking on the LWO versus the Good Brothers in a triple threat. This match had some craziness involved. There was... LWO and Frazier and Axiom just going all over the place. And then the Good Brothers were there too. But there was a crazy Spanish fly early on. Frazier does his springboard moonsault into the AJ Styles DDT. And then Axiom throws, I think, Wild into him as well. So he hits them both at the same time, like a double DDT both ways. It was pretty cool. There's then a spot from Wild where he does like a pop-up into like a mule kick, which was pretty cool. And then a crazy dive from Joaquin Wild to everyone on the outside. When we came back, there was then a Spanish fly off the top from Axiom. There was then a splash, and then Carl like caught him afterwards and tries to powerbomb him. It was pretty chaotic with all three teams. Even Doc Gallows got in there, hitting a few big boots, and then a like slingshot tope from Carl Anderson, which I thought was pretty impressive. That is working boots for Carl, tonight. yeah. And then a nutso like tornado corkscrew senton splash from Del Toro, taking out everyone. But it's Frazier who gets him back in the ring and hits him with a 450 splash to pin him. Therefore, Axiom and Frazier are going on to stand and deliver to face the Wolf Dogs for the tag titles. Uh, yeah, I, I thought a pretty pretty fun opener here. Uh, obviously, you've you've got like LWO and Axiom and Nathan Fraser who are uh, just like great high flyers and so exciting to watch. But I thought. Anderson and Gallows also did their bit in this match as well. I was surprised with the outcome. I, I was completely expecting some shenanigans that leads to a, a four-way tag or something. But no, we've gone with Axiom and uh, Nathan Fraser. Uh, completely see them taking these titles at, on yeah. Saturday. Um, but yeah, f fun opener here. Yeah, I, you know, we now know that LWO aren't on the card for WrestleMania. Like, they're only going to be in what Ray's corner. Mm. So you could tell they were hitting all sorts of crazy stuff in this match being like, Hey, look, we deserve to be on. That I think show. it's a shame. I think these two guys who uh, have really stepped up in the last year, we've always been singing Raul Mendoza, Cruz, Cruz del Toro's praises. Uh, what? Uh, 
enhancement talent of yeah, the year, like exactly. three years in a row when we used to do that. Um, so I think it's a shame. I think these two have really been like busting their asses this last year. And uh, for them to not have a match, hopefully they'll still be featured somehow in yeah. this Ray uh, Dragon Lee match. But still, um, Axiom Nathan Fraser, they are your only actual NXT team here with the others being on on like, and, and they've been on a down. run so it makes more sense especially if we're switching the titles that you you get it onto these guys and and with the new show WWE Speed mm. you'd imagine Frazier and Axiom are on that because they're like two of the fastest I'd assume so their yeah. gimmick is that they're fast yeah they're superheroes and they're fast he dresses as the flash they say we have never slowed down yeah. at the end afterwards they cut a little post-match interview and they say that we just did some crazy stuff there, but wait till Saturday and see what we do against the Wolf Dogs. Mm. So, yeah, I, I think a title change is in order yeah. as well. We see Lexus King, a little video for him. He's calling out Von Wagner, and he says, I'm going to embarrass you. I'm going to beat you. And that match is later tonight. We have Fallon Henley and Kalani make their entrance as we go to break. When we come back, there's a little video, first of many here, for the dinner party. Yes. Ilya Dragunov and Tony D'Angelo are going to have dinner, but it's Ilya who goes to his car in the parking lot. First of all, he's alone in the parking lot. Mm. You're, you're wrestling for the title on Saturday, champ. Not the best Death safe wish. move. But his car has got that like... It's been clumped. Yeah, the wheel has been sh shut off, so he can't access that when this, what, a uh, dark tinted SUV pull up, all the goons inside, they go, yeah. get in. Get in the car. And he goes, oh, I don't know about that. And he goes, you don't want to keep the Don waiting. So Ilya hesitant, but gets into the car and drive off. So more to come from that, as we'll see. Yeah. The dinner. Yeah, I'll, I'll save my thoughts <laughs> yeah, at the end, I yeah, think. Yeah, <laughs> JC Jane and Fallon Henley, one-on-one -on -one here. JC's got her mean girls with her, including Jasmine, who's now sporting the arm in a sling, mm -hmm. as predicted from last week. Uh, there's JC, who's just, like, beating down on, on Henley here, and then, like, they start to go around ringside and she starts to like beat down on her in front of her friends. And she's got Kiana James and Izzy Dame. Meanwhile, Fallon's got Kalani and Thea Hale. And Thea keeps trying to get at her as Kalani's like holding her back. JC then hits this like running neck breaker for a near fall. And then it's when the girlies, the mean girlies try to get involved when we see JC hit the running knee for the one, two, three, which uh, I guess the, the real story comes after because they cut the the new Monday Night Raw promos. The cam that follows you through Gorilla. Oh, the the one yesterday was great. Did you see? No, which one? Seth. Oh, okay, yeah. Seth yeah, yeah. walking past Drew, who sat there in his shorts. Yeah, yeah. And then making the entrance like well, one long shot. I I've been enjoying these takes. This one's even better because they walk through Gorilla, and there's the Rock's daughter, Ava Rain, mm -hmm. and she's watching them. And they say, "I was never your friend, Thea. I I saved Chase. You. I started the calendars and." You haven't done anything. And then they walk out and Ava's like, all right, girls. And then Thea comes in and she's screaming. I had to turn the volume down on her TV. And Ava decides to make it a six woman tag at Stand and Deliver. Thea, Fallon and Kalani taking on JC, Kiana and Izzy. Yeah, I, I thought the match was OK. Uh, I do like Fallon Henley in ring. And, and I do think JC Jane's pretty good in ring as well and definitely has the character work. But this was mainly a setup. There was lots of fuckery in the in the match with all the sort of outside interference. But I have been enjoying the what we've seen across the three brands, the the blending of the ring stuff with the backstage. Like it makes the backstage actually feel like an actual backstage. And feuds don't stop and start when you come through the curtain. It's like you I, I have been enjoying those kind of takes they've been doing. We we assume we were getting the six person next week. Uh, last week, uh, we're getting it now. You've you've got some good workers in there, like I said Fallon, Thea, Kalani, like uh, yeah. and yeah. I can't say it's the most excited match on the card, but it it gets a bunch of these people on there. Yeah, these are your like real up and coming women's division here in NXT, and like Thea has definitely showed glimpses of some all, all of them. Like yeah. some of them are newer than others, but. Still, like I'm a fan of of most of these women on this match, so I'm hoping we get something something shining out of this thing. But yeah, I mean, it's just another match added to this PLE that we would normally just see these on Tuesday nights. Yeah. We go to a video for Josh Briggs. He has a title match this Saturday. He says, "The last two years, you may have known me as a tag team wrestler." Shows pictures of our boys, Briggs and Jensen. Mm -hmm. Hope hope you're doing all right out there, Jensen, wherever you are. Hope you're doing all right. I'm sure. Yeah, he'll be good. Please, Jensen. 
You're the man. But anyways, Briggs says, yeah, I've been a tag team wrestler, but lately uh, an absolute legend in this business gave me advice. And then it shows the footage of the absolute legend, John Bradshaw Layfield. Don't legend. You, don't you don't you even absolute smirk at me. legend. I said yeah. that without smiling. <laughs> absolute <laughs> legend. JBL said, kick some ass. So that's what I'm gonna do this Saturday. Uh, at least they brought that up because it was that JBL promo that like made yeah. him. Spill. Yeah, I like these. That yeah, that was the thing. They show the the three people in the North American title were getting kind of these featured videos. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have a shout out to the band The Wonder Years for Year of the Vulture. You a fan of The Wonder Years? Sure. Is it like the <laughs> show with Jason Hervey? Yeah, that, that's the only back. thing I know. Yeah, yeah. It comes all back around. Lexus King taking on Von Wagner in our matchup here tonight. Von comes out. He's pretty pissed at Lexus King with the whole stuff with Mr. Stone and caused a rift between them as well. And Von comes out and he just starts beating down on Lexus. He goes around ringside and the crowd, to be fair, are pretty behind Vaughn. I mean, how how great is it to watch someone beat up Lexus King? And they're really behind him. But when he comes back in, uh, Lexus gets him in a sleeper. Eventually, King uh, gets like rolled out of that. Vaughn is in control. Hits like a double underhook butterfly like slam for a near fall. And then a choke slam on the apron. And then ringside goes for a power bomb, but can't quite get it. And then the second attempt... He's countered into a DDT. It was a little messy here. And then gets rolled into the ring and King hits him with the coronation for the one, two, three. Yeah, Von couldn't quite get him up on the first power bomb, but second one was countered nicely yeah. enough. But uh yeah, like I enjoy the character of Von. I, I enjoy the sort of, you know, Frankenstein's monster putting people through tables, but wrestling isn't the most exciting, and he's in the ring against the least exciting person in ring, in my opinion, in NXT, in Lexus King. So this this was a uh, the low point of the show, for sure, for me. Yeah, like Von Wagner, they're really trying to get something there. And there there could potentially be something. I've, I've, we still love our, our Von, but King isn't the guy to get it out no. of you. He's someone who can't still seem to, to really grasp and he, good matches. <laughs> he got, like, he got the win here, but I can't see him progressing anywhere above this yeah to be honest yeah I, like I, I feel they they tried early on having him up the card yeah. and didn't work with mellow and now he's just floating frank in the chat brings up a point can at least once vaughn get a w though because yeah. yeah he's always losing in these yeah. feuds it's the same feud they just someone feuds with him and stone and then he loses. bullies stone yeah. Vaughn sticks up for him and he loses yeah so i guess that ends that feud i guess vaughn and stone are done as well who knows we see Ava going up to Carmelo Hayes backstage in his locker room with his security guards. And she says like, Hey, there's going to be a lot of security in your, in your <laughs> face to face with trick later tonight. So just letting you know, like your guys can be there, but I'm going to have people too. And he's like, yeah, whatever. I got my guys. It's fine. Yeah. We see Natalia and Carmen Petrovic. <clears throat> They're both blonde. They're both Canadian. So Natty, is there training? I'm I'm sorry, but this is like Carmen Petrovic is meant to be what uh what's the background? Jiu-jitsu, karate or karate? something? I don't know. She's and meant to be incredibly like skilled in it. And here's Natalia going, so when when she kicks you, you block her like this. I'm like, I'm sure, Natalia, talk about wrestling, but sorry, you're you're talking about someone who's got a legit background She's in like, this oh that's how you count against kick? someone else wow. with thank you a legit background in martial arts yeah <laughs> former karate champion yeah. she's been competing in the canadian national team since she was 17 and here's natalia telling her to to block a kick from the mma expert well maybe like, if she like, listened to Natty years ago she would have gone even further yeah. If you just learn how to block a kick imagine your whole career you're like whoa so this is how you block a kick it's wow. like you know when uh there were those stories of like you'd have a comedian as a guest host on Raw and Vince McMahon would be teaching them like how he wants them to tell the jokes. And it's like, it's kind of my job, Vince. Yeah. Like, kind of what I do. Well, Roxanne Perez walks in and goes, a few years ago, I would have listened to her, but not now. Like, yeah. Nah. You mean a few years ago. Natty has been doing this 10 years. She's been showing up in NXT. Yeah, but Roxy like hasn't been there. That <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but Natty has been... Giving doing this kind of stuff in NXT for like since honestly, it, it's like every six months. Oh, I'm not doing anything on the main roster. I'll make a friend 
in NXT. She's and down I'll, in Florida. I guess she's close. I'll have a win. Country. I'll lose a match, and then I'll go back. Yeah. Like I know, uh, you know, TJ Tyson Kidd. He's all about training and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So maybe there's something there. Like maybe she is also been in the PC and stuff like that. But teaching karate experts how to block kicks. Yeah. I don't know. Roxanne says, "I'll, I'll." Sorry, like she's not going to help you essentially, and mm. just being being mean, and they kind of scoff at her. Um, we go to Ariana Grace backstage, and she's talking about punctuality because Gigi is supposed to show up, or Georgina, as she's been calling her, but she's nowhere to be found. And when Ren St. Clair comes in, and that's when our friend Steph Chase, who was watching with us, went. Ren Sinclair, what kind of an NXT name is that? Which I felt so vindicated for all the, the people who yell at us and say you never get them wrong, the names right. Uh, they she goes, Oh, what's going on with you in these these dresses? And and because she's got like this whole locker of like pageantry stuff because she's supposed to give Gigi this makeover. And she says, Oh, Georgina will look great. And Ren says, Well, Gigi already looks great. Why would you need to do this? Isn't pageantry about like being who you are and Ariana does not like this and says, you've ruined everything. How dare you? This will have to wait. I'll see you later in the ring. So it's set up a match. Yeah. Ren hasn't clicked for me on any level right now. I think she needs to find something. Uh, I I found these sort of little backstage segments. She's had very bland. I think her gear is awful. Like the, the sort of what, like eighties, like dance school tights and, yeah, just not working, and yeah, like she needs she needs something about yeah. her that we haven't quite seen yet. Um, Ariana is always quite funny in these things. Yeah, she is. We go to our next match. It is Carmen Petrovic taking on Lola Vice. So they did a good job of building this up for what it's worth. Because uh, last week we had the training videos to hype up for this match, where they explain like, look, Carmen legit background in karate, legit yep. kicks ass. Plus Lola Vice, also former, you know what MMA and all sorts of different stuff and it had them training and now setting up this, but, but yeah, where does Natty come in from two people who are like trained and maybe she needs to learn how to wrestle more. And that's why Natty's in, I don't know. But anyways, um, there's, there's uh, a bunch of like grounded wrestling attempts here. There's Lola who gets this great uh, arm bar attempt early on. And then these like body shots, but Carmen comes back with these sidekicks and then uh, starts to like, uh, use these these kicks and then like a sweep which was very impressive like it showed like yeah use what you're good at and mm. highlight that you can like do all these crazy things with your legs eventually though lola gains back in control and while natty's watching ringside she drops carmen down and puts her in the sharpshooter right in front of natty and she sticks her tongue out as carmen taps out and as natty gets in the ring to console carmen on the on the mat Lola just stands in front of them laughing and shakes her ass in front of them. Yeah. Love it. Uh, yeah. I think the, uh, often what we see in, in wrestling, when you have these people with like legit striking backgrounds, it's their strikes end up looking kind of weak when it comes to wrestling. Cause they don't, don't want to take people's heads off, you yeah. know, like that's what they've, it's relearning something. And I think we've seen that a little bit with, uh, with both these two, really. But I thought they both looked better here. I thought they both stepped up. And I thought their their kicks and strikes looked really good. I actually thought Lola Sharpshooter looked pretty nice you as did. well. You did, yeah, it did. Um, Natalia obviously already has the win over Lola. I reckon we're getting a, a rematch where, Next week. where Lola wins this. You know what? Maybe just have Carmen turn on, on Natalia get the win for Lola and pair these two up as just these two like killers killers. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I know we've seen a bit more of Lola, but I think this was the best showing from Carmen and Mm. possibly Lola as well. Like I think with that background, there's, there's room for like that, that could, they could both be stars with that background. Like who knows what you could go into this, but it's, this is one of Carmen's biggest TV spotlights yet. And she, she definitely like showed improvement and was pretty good. So I see some things with this. Shout out to our friend Mark, who says he's he's got history with uh, training. Yes, uh, with Lola Vice, and uh, is is uh, is like us and all the fans out there that are are out there telling Shawn Michaels to sign Lola Vice's system. All right, as well. <laughs> uh, we go to Dragonov. More of this. He's in the back seat of a car, tinted windows, and they stop the car and they say, "Get out." 
walk. So he goes, he sees this building, goes in this back door. We've all been there here. He sees these guys with power saws in the middle of the night, just, just cutting foam. Just sawing styrofoam. Just staring at him. Just, yeah. Being all intimidating. Wearing their fedoras. And he's got, they've got nail guns and he's like walking through this place. Like, what the hell is this? It felt like this really, I mean, we, we just reviewed Rocky, but it felt like they should be walking through like meat. A meat freezer, right? Yeah. With the hanging cows, yeah. that that sort of thing. And it felt like this was an incredibly budget version. I think that was the the picture they had in their head. But, but the guy cutting foam and nail gunning nothing. There yeah, was no like meat. Last, there was no meat last week they, they made it out that this place they were going to dinner is almost this mythical place. Like Stax is like, wait, that place really exists? Right. And Tony's like, yeah, it exists. Like not many people go there. And we ended up having a black room with one guy with a saw and then another black room with a table with a red cloth. And then like there's a bunch of studios. It felt very like drama studio making this as a play. And I was like, come on. Yeah. It's it's not like the past few weeks, the stuff, I think Ilya is one of the best wrestlers in the world, like pound for pound, but they've been making him so goofy Mm. with this stuff. So it's so weird. So he sits down and Tony D walks in and then it says to be continued. So he's in this warehouse with nail guns and saws yeah. and a bunch of old Italian people. Mm. Pray for him. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> we go to the Supernova Sessions, the metaphor. It went from like real dark and attempted to be scary. The guy with the nail gun. This is like Home Alone 2 or something. To very happy with the metaphor entrance thing. I mean, that's NXT for yeah, you. Love it. So... Uh, In it, here we have the metaphor all in the ring, and then Noam Dar, who got a chuckle not only once, but twice with the exact same joke. So I got to give it to (laughs) Noam Dar for, like, you know, someone who likes to reuse the the same jokes. Roxanne. (laughs) Roxanne. It's the weirdest song. (laughs) And then, uh, yeah, we've been over that. Yeah. As he comes out here, she, sorry, as she comes out here, she makes her way. He then does it again and equally got the laugh from me. So, again, you win, sir. Uh, he then brings out Lyra, and she's just all angry and aggressive. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa settle down. Please, settle down. F- please, please. And Roxanne just says, hey, just give me the title. I see your arms are feeling better, but that's mine, and I want it. Just give it back to me. And Lyra says, oh, you just say the same thing over and over. You say it's not your fault that you lost the title. But it is because it's not your fault that Indy climbed the ladder before you did, or it's not your fault that Lola Vice, you know, cashed in her contract. I mean, it, it's not <laughs> her fault. But yeah, she then says that uh, rocks that like you just blame people. You've been blaming everyone else, and now you're just mean. And uh, I, I'm, I'm not standing for it. Roxanne says, "Yeah, well, you've been champ for six months, and I think it's time I knock you off your pedestal." And I'm dangerous. And at Stand and Deliver, I'll show you that. And Lyra says, well, you know what? All you do is bitch. Bitch, bitch, bitch. And after Stand and Deliver, you'll have a lot more to bitch about. And then they start to fight. And Lyra puts her up on her shoulders and hits her almost bird bomb or Mm -hmm. the AA through the Ikea table with the metaphors candy. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I, I quite like this. I... I like Lyra kind of pointing out the inconsistencies in Roxanne's gripes. She was like, hey, uh, suddenly now you have an issue with it all? Like, you weren't calling it your title when Tiffany Stratton was champion, when Becky Lynch was champion. You weren't saying it then, but now I'm champion. You're saying it's your belt. And, uh, And is also bringing up, hey, you've got an issue with Lola cashing in. You cashed in on Mandy. That's how you won the title. You right. cashed in and won quite suddenly and unexpected. So I liked Lyra's justifications here. Um, and I thought the physicality was pretty good. Lyra seemed to get actually busted open Her nose from, this, is bleeding. from this punch from Roxanne. Yeah. The same. And also I kind of like the, like this wasn't a standard wrestling table, as you put it. It was more like a yeah, the, the Ikea coffee yeah. tables you get. And I I thought that made it look a little better because it had stuff on it as well yeah we know it's not just your classic breaking table so yeah i i think this feud is in in a good place um and i i am looking forward to the match i I think they'll kill it while you're on that subject like 
normalize using other types of tables. Yeah, you know, 100%. sometimes you know we have this, we have like a new Japan style table yeah. here at the BD. Like but one we that all, absolutely will not break. We ha- we could test that out. Uh, we have a plastic one that like you don't usually see in wrestling because they can't you can't usually break someone mm. through that. But again, try it out. Glass tables, real glass. We yeah. have a glass table in our living room yeah. as well. Like there's different tables you can. You know, there's different chairs also yeah. in this world as well. But I, it's always interesting seeing like, and I'm pull out a table because these are the ones we use. But uh, I am also excited about this match. I think um, the feud itself, the the story and everything makes sense. I'm not too sold on some of the acting from some of them from the past mm-hmm. few weeks, but I think the match will deliver. Roxanne in this new character should beat Lyra going forward. And be the the new heel baddie here in NXT because she's she's great. So yeah, the match itself will, will. We get a video for DiJack hyping him up for this Saturday in the Triple Threat North American Title, and he says that it's his time. And uh, I actually was making myself a, a burrito because you were kind enough to make burritos here. But I assume he said justice will be served. Yeah, I, it was it was what you imagine a <laughs> DiJack video package is. It's black and white. He's wearing sunglasses and then, <laughs> inside. He's yeah, talking I'll be about wearing. justice. And um, then Oba was Oba. It shows like he, he was watching this, and he says, and then he turns to the camera and he says, "I'll show you one champion." Sorry. So he has a match just a little bit later. Yeah, I, I like that. We saw like Oba watching both. We assume he was watching the the Briggs one yeah. as well. We see Ava talking to Trick, and she's talking about how like, hey, you know, this is the biggest match in NXT, and. I want things, I want a definitive finish kind of thing, which makes me believe they announced it's, you know, no holds barred or something, which they did not do at the end of this Mm. episode, which I think they should add to it. I'm not sure, but yeah. We then go to our next match, Oba Femi taking on Joe Gacy. I'm not going to call him creepy Joe Gacy anymore. I'm just going to call him crazy Joe Gacy now. But before Gacy can make it to the ring, he is attacked by Sean Spears, the chairman. But... The match is going to be thrown out, but Gacy's like, no, 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 I want to do this. I want to be in the match. So he goes in the ring, and as Vic and Booker are like, man, like normally a guy who's not been attacked before his match doesn't fare well against this giant, but this guy just got hit with a chair, and he still wants to wrestle. Like, what are they? What is he thinking? But the match starts, and Oba just immediately squashes him. He's throwing him around the ring. He does like these splashes in the corner. He then has him on, what, the apron and kind of like, swats him and chops him down on his chest and like right away you can really see loud really like red chest there uh eventually he throws his like big back suplex throw and i don't know what happened here but the camera goes solely on oba and they call the match a no contest and at one point there they made it they they did not show gacy at all and you could see a little concern in the eye of Oba Femi, especially someone who's not been here for that long and not have many matches. His eyes were very like, oh my God, oh my mm. God, what is going on? But I I was a little worried for Gacy. I thought he took the move like, okay, I could see him actually blocking in midair, like where he was going to land. And then later tonight, he, to go ahead here, he does go into Ava's office selling that he's hurt, but says, I want a match and will be wrestling this Saturday. So I think it's safe to say he's okay because I was a little bit worried when they I, didn't show him. I feel like this might have been just an angle. Um, really? We know like they have played about with the throwing up the X thing in NXT before. Hmm. Um, but to go to the match first, I, I thought Gacy actually showed a pretty incredible bit of strength because he hits this huge back suplex on Obafemi, who is massive. Yeah. Uh, followed by a line salt for a guy from his size, I thought was pretty pretty cool um but yeah i i think it might have been an angle playing into the fact that gacy was attacked beforehand and this whole gacy character is like he'll just keep coming back for more and yeah. and like he won't be put down so it takes a ref for a stoppage or something but it it is something where like it does make you think wait well, what's happening like is this is this real what's going on the fact that he was on the show so soon after like I don't think you'd have had time to do like, you know, concussion checks and all that in that time and book him for a match. So I I do think it was probably an angle. I don't, I just, maybe like they called it because they thought he was hurt. I don't know. Like the fact that they, they didn't play up it. They didn't even say anything. 
Oh, I, there's an update from Fightful's Corey Brennan, who says that the Joe Gacy situation on NXT was legitimate concussion protocol, but he's believed to be okay after early examination. Yeah. So it was just, yeah, precautionary, like... Okay, so this just happened, right? And as a viewer who I've been watching long enough, and I'm not tooting my horn to say, like, I'm a smart fan, but we've been, like, designed to, to notice that, like, if something's gone wrong, they're not going to keep the camera on it. Yeah. They're going to show someone else, yeah. and that's exactly what they did. So that's how I figured, like, hey, is he okay? Because mm. they didn't mention it. And then later on, he he's shooting an angle, like, yeah. oh, I'm injured, but, like, I'm okay. So I was like, oh, then he must be fine. This is all in the world where there is a fucking angle and character about Ridge Holland who hurts people and all this shit of injuries and blah, blah, mm. blah. He quit last week, so I guess there's that. But that shows you how, like, angry we were with that Ridge stuff the past few yeah. weeks, month, or whatever. So, like, that that irks me that, like, we live now, like, oh, like, it must be an angle where it's like, well, the guy looked like, the ref was like, hey, he's hurt, he's yeah. hurt. So it's like, don't the whole thing is supposed to be the hurting each other, but like, man, the only, we don't want to see bad but, things but the, happen on, you know, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. this is how it should be. Like they announced, you know, like, yeah, now it's fine. You win it. Yeah. Yeah. Like right away. You throw up the X and They're this like, guy's won. Yeah. Like, he's like, sorry, he can't pee. He's over. That's yeah. definitely the right way. But they were too scared to even show Gacy yeah. or even mention his name. They cut away like that and didn't bring it up all show just for him to be like, yeah, I'm fine. So it is, you know, you, you worry about these, these bumps and stuff that these guys take. So he is okay. He will be wrestling. I mean, uh, main card? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll go to it now. Later in the night, Ava Rain is in her office. If you want another chuckle here, she's got a giant folder mm. and she's looking at it and she goes, huh, really got to pat myself on the back for this stand and deliver card. And then she closes the folder and she's just smiling. And then Gacy comes in and he's crawling all over the place. And he's like, I want a match with John Spears. He, I want a match. Give me him. And she's like, all right, fine. It's on the countdown show. So there you go. Yeah, I, I'm going to be honest. I don't know if I'll be in the arena for this at 1130 in the in the morning, but I'll try my best. I will not. For the chairman. I mean, we're going together, I imagine. No, so. but we're not going to try our best. <laughs> I'm joking, I'll try my best. <laughs> yeah, you already said that Saturday is, what, put five different alarms? Yeah. To make sure we make it to this show. Oh, I was talking about the morning after doing the show about the show. Oh, that's when I'm going to be more tired than I don't know. You're a whole day me. of wrestling. Yeah, days. Just get up out of bed, right? <laughs> is what I'm saying. We go to where do we go to now? There's there's a lot still. I'm sorry. We go to Lyra and Tatum. Paxley. Yeah, Lyra's backstage and Tatum Paxley, who's kind of been her friend slash stalker. You know, friends and stalkers are the same. She's like, "Hey, what's going on with you, Lyra? That's not you. Why are you being so like?" aggressive and she's like well sometimes you got to do what it takes and i got to do what it takes to keep this title i thought this was weird considering tatum's been all spooky weird and this was the first time she was acting like a normal person and then calls out the baby face champion for being a bit of a dick and she's like what she she hit her well i think maybe her. tatum likes lyra because she is okay. that way around maybe and then mm -hmm. lyra's seeing maybe i need to be more like tatum to to beat this girl <laughs> We go to our next match, Ariana Grace taking on Ren Sinclair here. Grace is very aggressive early on here, beating down on ben, on Ren. She puts her in a nice-looking Boston Crab here, but Ren comes back with this running, like, sit-out. Larry, it looked very nice, but it's Ariana who gets her into the corner and does almost like a European clutch, but then as she's bending backwards, she holds on to the bottom rope, and the ref just didn't see it and counts the one, two, three, and Ariana wins and then waves to the crowd. And the crowd seemed to like Ariana, even though she's kind of a, bit, a heel. I thought this was the, the best Ariana's looked. I liked that she wasn't going into the, oh, no, I don't hit me. I don't want to hit people. She was she was dominating here. And I, I thought looked good with some of her moves. Had a nice deep Boston crab. Yeah. It was yeah, very it deep. Nice. Yeah, it was yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of said my piece on Ren Sinclair earlier. I want to see more from her. I need her to change up the look and get a bit of an edge, I think. Yeah, the, the Zack Ryder, like... Yeah, pants. not working. Yeah. We see a list of everything going on this weekend for WrestleMania. There's, like, kickoff shows, panels, mm. WWE World, the, the Speed debut as well. Ah. It's a busy week. Lots of stuff. We go to the dinner. Ilya and Tony in this dark room in this building. We're not sure where. And Ilya says, Tony, now I know why you brought me here. As soon as you invited me, 
I looked up the location. See, this is a smart wrestler. He got an invite and it said, you know, show up to dinner at this location. And he Googled it and found out that this is a pretty sketchy place. He says, I did my homework and this is a scary place. And somehow I'm still here. I'm not scared of you. And Tony says, yeah, well, you know, you should be lucky because this could be the end of you. And it will be the end of your reign because that's what this represents. And you can see it in my eyes, Ilya. I could have taken you out the moment you walked in here. You saw all those guys cutting foam. <laughs> they could be yeah. cutting you. <laughs> he didn't say that, but that's what I was thinking. He then says, hell, I could do it right now. And he grabs his injured hand that stacks hurt last week. He grabs him and he gets real close. And he goes, but I won't do that. I'll only take this title because that's what I want. And it will be mine. And I will beat you this Saturday. And then his what consigliere, his group, mm. they bring over this big dinner plate with like the metal hand thing covering it. And then says, enjoy your last supper as they all walk out. So we don't see what's in this thing. Yeah, it wasn't big enough to be a horse's head. Yeah. And we don't find out what he had for dinner. I hope it was nice. No, it, it's, of foam, it's probably <laughs> spaghetti and tomato sauce because that's all these guys have seemed to eat on these shows. I'm not, I'm not talking about Italians. I'm talking yeah. about these Italians yeah, on yeah, this yeah. show. Yeah. It's very <laughs> pathetic looking pasta yeah. quite usually. Um, yeah, like I I thought this completely lacked. As I said, they, they built it up like it was going to be this like serious place. It was just a black room. Um, and I don't think either said anything we haven't heard. Ily is saying like, oh, I do everything to hold on to this title and I can't be broken. And Tony's saying, well, I'll be the one that breaks you, essentially. I must break you. We've, we've heard this week after week um, and for most of Ilya's feuds, to be honest. Um, it's it's a shame because I think, I think this is the match that makes the card look less interesting. I think there are nice things on the undercard, like the 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 tag match like the triple threat north american title match like the women's title match obviously trick and mellow mellow is the main the title match just feeling less than drags this card down for me it's it's not been very exciting i again i'll, I'll reiterate that i think Ilya dragunov is one of the best pound for pound wrestlers like going and it kills me to see him being put in these like mobster movies like this is not good fellas this is not a scorsese pick this is kind of low end like videos for a title match and i know they should have just cut his fucking finger off i like i don't know would have made it interesting yeah i don't know <laughs> like i don't you know i'm sorry that scorsese doesn't direct nxt but like they could have gotten something else they could have done fuck literally anything i i i don't think this match had a lot of people's attention before mm. for the past few weeks. And I sure as hell don't think it's got a lot of people's attention now after watching this. If anything, this sours people. It, I, I love Ilya, but his acting is bad. Tony is like not, he's been doing this already for years. So it's not like this is anything new. It came out of nowhere and, and they haven't added anything new to it for either character. And it's just meh. Like, it's like this guy play like play pretend in a mobster movie that's just i don't know it comes it's very like cheesy low low budget almost and again Ilya's is great so maybe the match will be good maybe you know italian kurt angle tony d'angelo really steps up and they have a banger and maybe he does beat Ilya. i don't know but i i don't know as as a world title picture there's a reason it's not the main event mm. because this couldn't be the main event really so as much as we love tony d we love Ilya, but wow i was it was it was it was pretty bad. Yeah. So I'll I'll leave it at that. So don't watch it or watch it. I don't know. Go watch it. I'm I, I really want the match to kill though. I, I really hope we get some some good wrestling because Tony has shown glimpses that he can go. So let's see it. We go to Sol Ruka versus Blair Davenport. Blair is the one who injured Sol Ruka, amongst many others, and it took her off the shelf for nine months. So the revenge match is here. Uh, Blair charges the ring and runs at Sol right away here, uh, but Sol counters out. There's a crazy front flip into a super kick, which was great. Then Sol starts to do like a bunch of flips and starts working the arm. I swear she's doing like bits of like old school type things like the Undertaker working the arm here, but doing flips and stuff. Uh, there's a standing moonsault for a near fall and then a PK off the apron. 
Blair, though, they start to brawl ringside, grabs her by the injured knee, and then slams it off the steel steps and starts beating down on her. When we come back from break, she's still in control here, but eventually Soul hits a splash for a near fall. Blair hits her with this nasty backdrop suplex, only a two count, and then Soul hits the rainbow DDT. Yeah, like uh, Jake Atlas used to do, the cartwheel on the ropes into the DDT. This is what she did on her return, taking yeah. out Blair, but did it on the uh, like barricade, right? So hits this move and then goes for the soul snatcher, but Blair kind of blocks it and gets out of the way and then goes to hit her with the, hits her with a falcon arrow and goes for the Kamigoye, but it's blocked and Soul rolls her up one, two, three and gets her revenge and the win on Blair Davenport. I have been so impressed with Soul Ruka. Like, she hadn't been wrestling too long before a, a pretty bad injury that took her out for, what, a year almost? Almost it, a year, yeah. And she comes back, and she doesn't look like she's Mr. Beat. She even looks like she's improved. She looks improved. She's not done this long, and you often find these these sort of uh, kind of NXT new people who do flashy moves don't really have the stuff in between. Uh, and I, I would even say a veteran like Naomi's guilty of this, where she tries to do some stuff which is like, you know, unique and original and we haven't really seen, but it, it just comes across convoluted and doesn't really work. Whereas here, like, Sol was doing, as you mentioned, some really interesting, like, flips and stuff mixed in with classic chain wrestling and the wrist locks and all that. I I think she's really picked this up really quickly and i think uh and yeah getting a big win over blair here if you do have the title change in the women's title scene and you have a heel roxanne as champion soul is someone i'd like to see chase for that title yeah yeah no she's she's totally stepped up i was a big fan of her when we saw just glimpses of her before the injury but now it's like coming back she's looks like she's head and shoulders above some of the other people who've not been off on the shelf so yeah uh interesting to see where she goes in in her career at nxt and wwe because you know all things go right i think she could maybe be a pretty big star in, in wwe she's got some really flashy moves and we've talked about the surfer gimmick but if done right maybe you know don't just don't show emotion and be chill all the time yeah you know love it we go to this is where we saw dijack briggs and uh Sorry, Dijak, Briggs, and Oba, as my spell check corrected it to Boa, and he's definitely not on the show, but Oba Femi, and they all are arguing about who's going to win at Stand and Deliver, mm. and Oba says, I'll beat you both. This is where I Gacy, think he will. Yeah, probably. This is where Gacy came into Ava's, and then we go to our main event slot here, the face-to-face -face one last time before the match. Carmelo Hayes, Trick Williams, both with lots of security with them, and they are face-to-face. -face. The crowd hype for trick as always whoop that trick and trick says it wasn't supposed to be like this it was supposed to be trick mellow gang from the beginning to the end and we had a bond so strong and now it's it's turned to this and trick mentions that this will be the first ple on a mania weekend featuring two black men in the main event which gets a, a huge reaction from the crowd here and mellow's like yes that's a big deal i get it but Trick says that makes it even harder because it's against my own brother, my own friend. And I've changed since the last time we faced. And they mention a house show, his third match ever in Virginia somewhere. And he says, I didn't know if I belonged, but you were there for me and you helped me. And Mello's like, yeah, I remember that. Like I had your back. And anytime Mello tries to talk in this promo, the crowd would just boo, yeah. <laughs> which was pretty great. Mello brings up the fact that championships are like his girlfriends he says i lost mine and then you lost yours and then i said i'd get mine back and you said you, you'd get yours back but then you went behind my back to go get my girl the nxt championship <laughs> and well you made your brother your enemy and trick is like nah it ain't like that why would you say that it's not like that i told you face to face and he recalls the time on nxt a long time ago where he goes yo i'm happy for you I like being your your friend and your partner, but I got to go on my own to try to see where I can go. It was a huge storyline, and he's saying, remember, I did that, so you can't say anything. And the crowd are behind me, and the crowd are definitely behind him because they're booing Mello and Channing whooped that trick a whole lot during this. And Mello says, that doesn't matter. You'll always be a backseat to me. 
And he says, everyone knows that you need me. And then Mello brings up the fact that like, and don't worry, you'll be hot right now. But after a little while, they'll, they'll drop you. They'll move on to the next person. Trust me. And Trick says, oh, like, I think he said, they love you when you're shining, but they'll switch on you like Nintendo. And yeah. Trick goes, oh, okay, okay. I see what this is. You're envious of me. You're angry that they like me now and not you as much. And Mel, he's basically saying you're jealous. And Mello says, no, no, no. I'll show you today. I am him. I don't miss. Doesn't matter. And Trick gets the crowd saying, whoop that trick as they start to brawl. He ends with, I'll whoop that trick and I'll whoop that ass. I found it funny because, uh, yeah, Mello punches Trick first. And Trick doesn't go to punch Mello. Punch he just punches guy. security. And this guy's like, yo, what the fuck did I do? It reminded me of, I, I don't want to, like, I just think of the, what, probably my way, Rock Austin. And they're always punching yeah. like, jobber cops and yeah. security guards and stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I thought these two had a great segment. And it was definitely needed for this. Like, if anything, this is the match of NXT for this Saturday. Like, this is what's getting me in the door for sure. I've really loved what Trick has done this past well i mean both of them really but like trick has definitely stepped up and elevated himself and someone that like his first time on tv not a lot of people really you know liked what they were seeing and then look all this time has come by and he's really become such a star here so i think this match will be the the highlight of stand and deliver i agree i was really disappointed with this segment you didn't like it no uh i i've been Loving the story. I thought the prime target last week was good. I just didn't think either brought enough. And I think it was maybe trying to bring that energy of, you know, ah, we were once friends and that. But I didn't really feel it with this. And I kind of wished it was reversed. And you maybe had the just the prime target this week to get you hyped. I don't know. It, it just felt a bit subdued for me. Um, and I think there was something in just the setting of it with them both stood up. I think maybe I know it's cliche, the contract signing and that, but having it over a table, something divided, then it, they just felt a bit awkward. I felt both standing there with people around them. It didn't, I, I didn't feel, I, I liked, I liked trick, you know, trying to tap into that emotion of you used to be my brother and that, but I, I needed to see him get fired up as well. And I think it was the right move not to just do his quick like one-liners and things, but I needed like a little bit more passion and anger out of him. I here. think we needed something to happen in this feud. It kind of cooled it off. And I know it's not main roster and all that stuff, but Melo could have really put the beat down on him maybe more than once that really like, Hey, I beat you so bad that like, I don't want you back in here and, and kind of thing. And it's still, I feel like they kind of, cooled it off a little bit, but that's kind of been what NXT has been doing. Like, Hey, well, you know, the match already like months, uh, a month to go. We already knew that this match was happening essentially. So it's like, I mean, we could see it from a while ago before that. So I, in, a, in general, I'm not excited about take over stand and deliver, but of all the things on this card, it is still this. Yeah. I, I don't think this necessarily made me more into the match. I've been into this match already, but it's, it's been kind of stagnant at a level. Oh, it, it hasn't put me off the match. I just really wanted a killer go home segment. And I, I really didn't think this was it. But I, I genuinely just right now, I don't feel NXT is as hot right now. I mean, main roster seems to be killing it with a lot of their stuff. That's the way it kind of should be with the big WrestleMania weekends. But I, I still think we'll come out of this show being like, oh, that was still a pretty good show. Like there's not a match on the show that that hopefully you know is bad but just the hype around this is kind of it's gone to the wayside i mean we know a lot of people we're going to wrestlemania with like a group of like probably like 30 different people give or take that we're moving and going to different shows with that like more than half of them are not going to this show and don't care which is fine there's a million shows going on this yeah. weekend like it's like gone are the days of nxt being the super indies that show is called aew these days and I think NXT serves way, way better as a developmental brand. And at WrestleMania weekend, NXT shouldn't be the show you're excited exactly. about over WrestleMania. I should be more excited about the show I'm spending fucking $600 on two nights of, 
you know, to see. You know, it's, I agree, it's, it's not where it was in the golden years of 2018, but it's like that didn't serve its purpose as being a main roster developmental. But all the stars all. from that are on main roster now. Well, Adam Seth, Cole, Johnny Gargano, Seth Rollins, Tommaso Ciampa. Like, what the fuck? No, like, Seth was like 2014. Like he was all, FCW. All, all these NXT people are like littered through that. Like Becky Lynch is one of them. Like Rhea Ripley is one of them. Like all these people have come through NXT mm. and they've like made themselves even bigger stars. I just feel like this show, I really don't don't care about uh, as much as, you know, it looks better than some of the last PLEs that they've done. Like, I'm pretty sure they did the show in Connecticut and stuff like that. But like, just, I, I, I don't feel, I don't feel like really any buzz for this one. And I, I still think it, I walk out and be like, I'm glad I went to that show. But I will say Trick and Mellow is still the match, and I'm yeah. happy it's the main event. I think it's going to be fun. I think there's there's some good stuff on there. Uh, I I get it. It's WrestleMania weekend. You want everyone to have their thing. Like, I do prefer, personally, a more streamlined, like, five bangers. Um, we don't necessarily need thea fallon and kalani versus jc kiana and izzy it's nice they get their moment i would say the same with the sean spears john joe gacy match um i mean at least that's the the countdown yeah, yeah. uh but i i think there'll be some good stuff on here for me that the the glaring thing is Ilya versus tony just isn't delivering at all yeah and hopefully the match does um but, but i get you i get what you mean like but it's it's just WrestleMania weekend's a different beast now. I think AEW's changed the the like those fans and they they jumped way before 2.0. The fans who like were were into that sure, sort of yeah. 2018 era. They they jumped way before 2.0 because AEW served that purpose and they could see, well, why am I watching Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole every week when they ain't gonna do anything on the main roster? sure enough they didn't and they haven't like yeah so i get it and but as a developmental brand and being solely that I, I think it's doing a nice job of building people at the moment and i am seeing people more likely to be stars on the main roster than i did during those glory years so it's it, it's interesting but i i do think uh, and i don't want to get up to to go at 12 but i'm the case with any show any show i yeah, wouldn't want to yeah, see yeah. anything at 12 and where else are they supposed to put it day have, three of my holiday like they have so I'm many spent, they have so many shows like how, where yeah. else are they supposed to put this show so and hopefully this is the last of that like once we go into the new tv deals i i would hope um i would hope smackdown moves off friday nights and that would solve a lot of things with these weekends because you can have nxt be the the friday night show and maybe to draw some more people into that you do have those main roster talents who aren't on WrestleMania be involved in that maybe, but 12 o'clock it, it's going to take a lot of people to go in. And I, I feel a lot of people would be like, Oh no, I'll, I'll watch that when I get home from my holiday and I'll catch up. And there's still a lot of tickets for yeah. the show. That's pretty cheap to go to. It's a lot cheaper than some of the indie shows, obviously, because it's WWE kind of marketed thing, but like, yeah, there's lots of tickets still available. I, I think you'll get still a decent crowd. Hopefully they sound pretty good. And everything but uh let's do a little uh predictions i mean th this week as far as the go home show like i said the 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 hype and the builds for some of these things just don't have me necessarily excited but overall i think some of the wrestling will be pretty good so let's let's be positive i guess but some predictions or preview here let's go through this sean spears and joe gacy at 11 30 in the morning in not a chairs match but a singles match <sighs> Uh, Sean Spears wins and then Joe Gacy laughs and gets back up from the dead and then gets hit with the chair, yeah, and then gets up again. Oba Femi, Dijak, Josh Briggs, North American Championship. Oba Femi, Oba Femi, I think so too. Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker, the Wolf Dogs versus Axiom and Nathan Frazier, tag titles. Axiom and Nathan Frazier, I think they should win it too. Yeah, yeah. maybe Braun shows up on Monday. Yeah, they can pin Bro uh, Baron. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, I know you're excited for Thea, Fallon, and Kalani, JC, Kiana, and Izzy. The baby faces. Yeah, why not? Thea pins JC or taps her out. Yeah, like yeah. Thea taps out JC for yeah, sure. Exactly. And then can face Roxanne. Yeah. The title. Uh, Ilya Dragunov, Tony D'Angelo. 
Ilya, I guess. Ilya, yeah. Ilya, I guess. Yeah, get the title on Trick eventually. Yeah, you can do that match again. All right, let's go with that. And then Lyra, Roxanne. Roxanne. Yeah, I'm going with Roxanne. It would just make things a bit more interesting. Mm. Maybe Lyra can go up. And then Carmelo Hayes and Trick Daddy. Trick Williams. Trick. I do want to see this feud move up, but I, I think for like that feel-good feeling at this weekend. Uh, hey, trick. maybe you know, you're know you saying the, the promo battle, they didn't get as heated or whatever. Maybe they just go, ah, fuck it. Let's just be friends again and go to SmackDown. Yeah. <laughs> Can do that. <laughs> Trick wins and Melo's like, yeah, that's what you are I good. That's what I always yeah. wanted to oh, get out of you. You are good. You know what? Let's just be boys. Yeah. Trick's like, yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Book it. So there you go. That is our stand deliver uh, predictions for you at 12:45 in the morning yeah. on Tuesday. So it's been a long show. We appreciate anyone who's still sticking around. We still have people in the in the YouTube chat. So uh, appreciate everybody out there and anyone listening uh, there. Thank you so much for listening. And you can listen to a lot of other stuff. We mentioned, we just did a collision road trip show from London, Ontario on Saturday, search poison Rana in your podcast app or YouTube and hit that subscribe and check out all the shows that we do. And if that's not enough, it's Philly WrestleMania week. And boy, we've been, we've been, celebrating Philly and getting in the hype because we've done a lot of shows over on our Patreon. It's only five bucks to become a friend and gets access to all the shows in that back catalog there. But the shows we've released in the last few weeks include ECW big ass extreme bash from the ECW arena from mm -hmm. 1996. Also, we looked at Rocky from 1976, the iconic movie. Then this last week, we just looked at WrestleMania 15 featuring rock Austin from Philly. So you, maybe you're right. Maybe Austin comes out. The glass shatters and the Run rock doesn't know what time. to do. Oh, what could happen? So, yeah, uh, lots and lots of shows over on our Patreon, including um, some retro NXT reviews, movie reviews, so many other things. And it's five bucks. And then on top of that, you're going to be getting all the road diaries that we're going to be dropping as well this weekend, including all the cheesesteak reviews. Oh, yeah. The Rocky Steps. Uh, I don't know what else. Yeah, but... I've got to pat my running shoes, don't I? I, I think I promised way I'll run with him gonna fly now you're gonna drink some eggs in the morning yeah and then just run to nxt <laughs> get there in time for sean spears <laughs> well you'll make it we have uh thanks we had a bunch of super chats and stuff tonight really appreciate it uh thank you hugh who says good chemistry boys post mania raw predictions my prediction is I will be in bed <laughs> watching it uh, and maybe we can give them on one of our road diaries, but we've been going four hours now. Gable, <laughs> Gable beats Walter. Yeah. Sorry, Gunther. Um, Braun Breaker does something big. Braun's on SmackDown. Oh, shit. All right. Wow. Well, there you go. Uh, appreciate everyone out there uh, at Poison Rana Pod, Twitter, Instagram. And hey, while you're listening, I know Way played it at the end of Review Away. Uh, thank you, Way, for playing that. But check out... Finish the story. Go to our socials or go on our YouTube page. I also put it on our podcast feed as well. But be Detroit's cousin, Spiffy J. is a rapper from Detroit. I made a Cody Kingdom sampled beat, and I made a video to it. So go check it out and give it a thumbs up if you like it and share it and show all your friends. Really appreciate it. But I, myself, Brayden Harrington, you can find me Twitter, Instagram, at the Bray D. And you can find me at Davey Portman. That's it. That's all. Take care. Goodbye. Be safe. And happy mania, y'all. Ahoy! First time in a long time. But back like I never left. Taking these days as it comes. You know me, I don't read ahead. Watch me burn down everything, BBE on the TV set. When I'm in control on the road, you can never really know what's up next. 